furniture for you? I know you don't think that the teams are able to cope very well with having weeks off since their previous game. East Carolina and Texas Tech coming up from Houston inside the dome there, which is a good thing for both offenses because it's been pretty wintry in Texas the past week. But how will those teams handle the layoff? The Texas Tech spread offense is a timing offense. It's a timing thing, and it will be an issue for them. The longer you lay off in a timing passing attack, the tougher it is for you. The conditions won't be an issue, but if it had been a condition thing, it would be a problem for them. The timing is so very important. Quarterback and receiver, timing the drops, getting the ball to the right place is an issue. I think we could see some drop balls, maybe some interceptions because of the timing here. It's one of those tough matchups to judge. East Carolina and Texas Tech have never met. East Carolina doesn't really play teams from the Big 12 Conference. When you look at Texas Tech, here's a team that was able to beat kind of the weaklings of the Big 12 Conference and get some non-conference wins, but didn't really defeat a real quality team in that conference. They played some people tough, but that's the only way we can judge this team. The fact that they played Kansas right. State tough, played Oklahoma pretty, pretty respectful as well. Well, they're going to face a pretty good passing attack. It's going to be an issue for them and also a big quarterback who knows how to get rid of the ball and run a little option as well. You get to see David Garrard. He is one of the big horses in college football, a guy that certainly has NFL potential. So it's Garrard and East Carolina. We have Cliff Kingsbury and the spread of Texas Tech. We go down to Houston. The inaugural Gallery Furniture Houston Bowl is coming up. Welcome to Capital One's presentation of ESPN Bowl Week. Great opportunity, man. Great opportunity. Focus, focus, focus. You're special. Now love all you got. This is the play hard. and accomplishments from bowl games of the past. Performances that shine bright this time of the year. Tonight, for the first time ever, East Carolina takes on Texas Tech. Head coach Mike Leach took his high-octane air attack from Oklahoma to Texas Tech. This year, no one assaulted the air more than the Red Raiders. But now, David Garrard and the swashbuckling Pirates await. It's the Gallery Furniture Houston Bowl next. One of sports' most storied arenas plays host to college football's newest postseason edition. As two teams with something left to prove square off in the inaugural Gallery Furniture Houston Bowl. Defending state's honor, Big 12 representative Texas Tech. A revamped offense led by sophomore quarterback Cliff Kingsbury has put the Red Raiders back in the bowl picture. Tonight, they put it to a postseason test. Awaiting the challenge are quarterback David Garrard in East Carolina. Once considered their home state's other team, the Pirates have built on a reputation forged in hard work. Will it pay off? East Carolina and Texas Tech. We take you to the kickoff in 60 seconds. Love college. Sophomore quarterback Cliff Kingsbury and the Texas Tech offense have put up impressive numbers and wins on their road back to the bowl season. Tonight, Red Raider fans hope their aerial attack is the Astrodome's lone star attraction. East Carolina's offense offers an impressive resume of its own. Led by the multifaceted David Garrard, the Pirates hope they prevail in an old-fashioned Texas shootout where the last man scoring wins. We welcome you to the first ever Gallery Furniture Houston Bowl and the matchup tonight from Conference USA, the Pirates of East Carolina, and from the Big 12, the Red Raiders of Texas Tech. And welcome to Houston. I'm Dave Barnett. Perhaps it's appropriate, since this is the first ever edition of this bowl game, that it's the first meeting ever between the Pirates and the Red Raiders, two teams that could not have any less in common, at least on the offensive side of the ball. For East Carolina, you're looking at a very traditional offensive approach under Steve Logan. They'll run it about 42% of the time and pass it 58% of their snaps. 
While on the other hand, in Mike Leach's first season in charge of Texas Tech, they run it only 18% of their snaps. And Cliff Kingsbury is going to drop back to throw 82% of their plays from scrimmage. Now, Bill Curry, one thing they do have in common is the quarterbacks. They're very effective on both sides. Both quarterbacks are good, and David Garrard, the quarterback for East Carolina, is so tough, according to his offensive coordinator, Doug Martin, he says he'll knock you naked and hide your clothes. What he means by that is this guy can run as well as throw. He runs the option, and he can improvise when the protection breaks down. But what Garrard really loves to do is to throw the deep ball. Of his 19 touchdowns this year, 12 have been over 20 yards, 9 over 40 yards. What that means for East Carolina is an excellent blend of balance as well as the capacity to strike quickly. But you know there's a very good player over there on the other side of the ball on the other sideline tonight. Boy, you're right, Bill. Uh, Cliff Kingsbury, Kingsbury, the quarterback for Texas Tech, is throwing the ball like crazy this year. And remember, just two years ago, this was a running team. Ricky Williams was fourth in the nation in rushing. But oh, how times have changed. And because of that, look at Kingsbury's numbers. He has set all kind of records this year for Texas Tech. But outside of those gaudy numbers is what happens before the play. That's where the fun starts. They'll have quick huddles. Sometimes they'll call the play at the line of scrimmage. It's what Kingsbury does before the snap checking out East Carolina defense, trying to bait them into a defense so he can call the specific play for it. It is like a chess match out there. The fun to watch is really before the snap. Now, Michelle, Bill and I have been talking about the two trigger men for these teams, but I'm sure there's a couple of defenses that would really like to have a say in the outcome of this one. Well, absolutely. Texas Tech boasts five of the top ten tacklers in the Big 12. All five of them have at least 100 tackles each this season. They've been led by sophomore middle linebacker Lawrence Flugens. He was a backup defensive end last season. The new coaching staff came in, they moved him to linebacker, and he totaled 156 tackles. That's up from six all of last year. This year's total, fourth best in the nation. Well, East Carolina, on the other hand, relies on depth. Defensive coordinator Tim Rose will rotate as many as 25 players, keeping fresh legs on the field at all times. And on top of that, his defense likes to joke that they're the ECU track team. They say they've been put through so many running drills and feel so well conditioned that they believe they can outplay anybody well into the fourth quarter. Dave, back up to you. All right, Michelle, and we have here matchup between coaches who in different ways inherited the difficult jobs for East Carolina and for Texas Tech. They were taking over pretty tough acts to follow. Mike Leach, his first year in following Spike Dykes, the winningest coach in the history of Red Raider football, and seven wins in his first year. He gets them back into the postseason. Their last trip to a bowl two years ago, a loss to Ole Miss in the Independence Bowl. And for East Carolina, Steve Logan took over after the best season in Pirate history. 1991, they won 11 games. They finished ninth in the country, and Bill Lewis then went on to Georgia Tech. Logan, in his nine years, a school record 58 victories. He has them in their sixth bowl, two liberties and independence of Peach. And last year, they inaugurated another first-year bowl, the Mobile, Alabama Bowl, where they fell to TCU, but a very business-like approach for Logan and the Pirates coming into this week. The message was loud and clear to his players. This was not a trip just to enjoy, but to win. And Texas Tech ready to get us underway. Clinton Greathouse will kick to a very dangerous Keith Stokes and Terrence Copper, second in Conference USA, in fact, is Stokes. So they're back deep. And Great House gets the first Gallery Furniture Houston Bowl underway. And from the two, Silks up the right side on the return. And shows why he, he had such impressive numbers during the regular season. He reaches the 38. And David Garrard will be in business from there. Second in school history behind only Marcus Crandall in total offense, the junior out of Durham. With Leonard Henry, his top running back, Stokes, his top receiver, Harris, also very dangerous. Powell, who's also the backup quarterback, and Burns is their third most popular target at tight end. The offense that averaged 386 total yards per game. Sends Powell in motion. And a play fake on first down, and the toss is to the wide open Burns, who fumbles it out of bounds at the 45-yard line. And a gain of six. 
And a sigh of relief. The offensive line up front for East Carolina. They are led by Sherwin Lacewell, senior out of Durham, second team All-American. Yeah, that's the guy you want to keep an eye on. Two-time All-Conference guy. He'll go on to the Hula Bowl to try and impress the Pro Scouts. And up front, the Texas Tech defense led by Chris Kosurik, senior from Caldwell, Texas. On second down, they run option. Gerard could be dangerous there. The toss is to Leonard Henry. Henry easily picking up first down yardage into the 42 of Texas Tech. A gain of 13 knocked out by Antoine Alexander. The linebackers are the strength of this Tech defense. Michelle told you about Flugents. John Norman second in the uh, interception category with three. And a secondary led by Kevin Curtis, who was... Their only consensus, all Big 12 selection. Kevin Curtis is around the football all the time. That's why he's first string all Big 12. First and 10, 42 of Texas Tech. And Gerard in three threat drop and hits Stokes with his first completion. Stokes will pick up about five to the 37, and Alexander is there for another tackle. Well, already you've got to like what you're seeing out of East Carolina, just the difference in plays. Bill, you talked about Garrard at the top and just how dangerous he is, and he's yet to run the ball, but he's spread the ball out to three different people already. It's exactly the way to start the game, get the uh, different amount of plays right off the bat and have them be successful. We'll see him throw short, deep, run the option, and everything in between. Second team, all conference USA as a junior. Garrard in an empty backfield. Here's the middle open up, and he's close to a first down. He's going to be about a yard shy at the 33, where Devin Lemons brings him down. Mike, reflecting on what you just said about the number of receivers and variety in their opening game against Duke University, 10 different players caught the football this year. Yeah, Texas Tech is going to have an interesting, what are they going to do to Garrard? Are they going to spy him a lot? If you do that, you take somebody out of coverage. That way, Garrard's able to spread it out to all those different receivers. They go with the eye on third and one. And again, run option, and Gerard will turn it up and keep for a first down to the 30. The reason that Gerard is such a threat on the option is not because he's shifty and quick so much as that he is powerful. He came into camp at 260 pounds three years ago. He's down to 235. But he falls forward. He runs over linebackers and makes first downs repeatedly just like that he's bigger at 235 than all but three of the guys are going to be trying to tackle him on the Texas Tech defense with four wides on first down Gerard hit as he throws and that one floats harmlessly out of bounds incomplete and let's send it down to Michelle DeVoy well, you were talking, Coach, about David Garrard. He says he weighs 268 when he came into uh, ECU. His teammates insist it was more like 273. Either way, Steve Logan demanded a change. Garrard says during the summertime, Logan ran him at noon in 95-degree heat, wearing a sweatshirt, and the quarterback dropped 30 pounds in three months. <laughs> That'll do it. <laughs> I guess so. And he's still called the buffet kill. <laughs> so it's a continuing battle for him. This way past the Stokes, who scampers inside the 20 and has another pirate first down at the 17, a gain of 13 for the little 5'8", 180-pound Keith Stokes. Now, this does not look like a difficult throw, but it is. One of the most difficult throws in football, this is a forward pass. There's no such thing as a lateral. There's a forward pass and a backward pass. That must be thrown forward and caught with forward momentum by Stokes. Beautifully executed and well blocked. And well blocked by exactly right. Two receivers down the field. Harris and Dodd, two guys that got down and stayed on their men. And the eye first two from the 17 of Tech. Movement up front, flags. Henry slanting off tackle for a couple. But you had a couple of black-shirted Red Raider defensive linemen jumping. We'll find out from the referee from the Big Ten. Bill Lamonnier, this entire crew from the Big Ten, whether they were drawn on. And they weren't. Now, Mike, 
you're a defensive lineman, mm -hmm. and we tease about that a lot. Yeah. But after all this time off, it's tough to discipline yourself to watch the ball instead of listening to the snap count. Oh, it's, and this early in the game, you know, you want to you get off on a good start, especially this tech defense as we get driven on here. You try and make that big play so you guess on the snap count every now and then, and it costs you. If that's going to happen, you better make up for it, come up with a big play on down the line. So the five-yard mark off, you're just inside the 12th, first and five. Again out of the eye. It's time to give to the first man through. Derek Helms, who slams forward for a couple. Now, if you Texas Tech down there, you're a team that relies on the passes, the short passes, to be most of your running game. A little different for East Carolina, which can rely on either the running or the passing and, down. Here. And you're seeing an effect of half run, half pass, or a more balanced offense than what Texas Tech brings on offense when you're able to run or pass on first down to be in second and short. Two, fake keeping, late pitch, steered nicely by Leonard Henry. He avoided disaster because Gerard let that one go high and behind him. Oh, that was close to being a forward. That was a, that was a heck of a, you know, this just shows you about Gerard, Coach. He wants to run somebody over. Yeah, but I had an old coach named Charlie uh, Tate at Georgia Tech who used to say, son, you're neither fish nor foul. He was neither fish nor foul there. He waited too long. Yep. He should have either kept it or pitched it immediately. It really should, it was a pitch play. It was a pitch play. And his indecisiveness hurt him on that play. Thanks to Henry, first and goal from the five. The other way, Gerard will keep and he'll walk in untouched for the East Carolina touchdown. Watch the difference in this play. Okay, we're not going to see it, but the difference was decisiveness. He immediately knew that he had the gap and he took it rather than to hesitate. That great, was the difference. Great opening drive by East Carolina. Great. Kevin Miller, 42 of 43 PAT during the regular year. This one is blocked. And the Raiders scramble, try and pick it up for a return. They won't, but they will keep it at 6 nothing. Pirates on a five-yard option keeper by David Garrard. East Carolina on the board the first time they have it in the first ever Allery Furniture Houston Bowl. Behind this door is the finest, fastest, and most affordable. Very impressive first possession by Gerard, East Carolina. As they go 61 yards, 10 plays, he keeps it the final five. And Chris Kosurik blocked the PAT attempt by Kevin Miller to keep it at six to nothing. With him just under three and a half minutes to get the early lead. And now Miller. Ready to kick it deep to the dangerous Wes Welker, true freshman out of Oklahoma City, the Oklahoma Player of the Year last year. It's an onside kick, and it is recovered for East Carolina by Marcellus Harris at the 49. Cole pulling out all the stops. Dave, what that is is two consecutive careless special teams efforts. East Carolina drives the length of the field, scores, has the extra point blocked because of a low kick and poor protection, immediately lines up, executes the onside kick to perfection. Oh, nice job. Just a little pooch kick, and I'll tell you, that's a gutsy call and a great call by their head coach, Steve Logan, who, when they started their practice for the bowl game, ran these guys to death right off the bat, and the players said, this guy wants to win this game. That is a gutsy, great call. This drive starts from midfield. Aaron Hunt comes in and forces Gerard to throw that one over his bench. Hunt, the leader for the Red Raiders, eight sacks during the year. And Kosurik met at Gerard. Well, Texas Tech is going to decide how they want to play Gerard now. I mean, if he's going to opt in, do they want to hit this guy right away and force the option a little more? They've been on their heels to, on that first drive. It's easy to talk about smashing the quarterback every time on the option, but you got to defend everything else. No, I want to well. hit him. I want to hit him, Bill. <laughs> I don't think you want to hit this guy. Second and ten. This one was caught by Corey Floyd. Uh, just four catches during the regular year. Short gain down to the shelf to Floyd. 
Well, you guys, Texas Tech's defense was more than ready to retake the field as quickly as they were. Greg McMack and their defensive coordinator spoke very sternly, but very patiently to them. They all said to one another, there's a whole lot of this ball game left. It's very early. They don't give up opening drives very often. But when they saw ECU get the ball back, they ran out and on, onto that field very ready, Dave. Greg McMack had a great hire away from the University of Hawaii's record turnaround team. A year ago. So third and seven. Gerard in the gun. And another short completion. This is going to be well short to Terrence Copper of first down yardage as he's tackled immediately by Antoine Alexander. See, Mike, we don't want you to hit Gerard because he would knock you naked, hide your clothes, <laughs> and nobody wants that. No, believe no, nobody. We, we don't want that. I don't even want to see that anymore. It's my body. <laughs> Good job by Texas Tech. Their defense looked like they were a little more aggressive that series. But Steve Logan already proving oh, I'm loving this, this is a night where Absolutely. he's going for everything there is to go for. And so the offense still out there yeah. on fourth in three. They were only 25% during the season. Converting fourth down. And Tech is not biting. And the time runs out in the play clock. So to the credit of the Red Raiders, they stay disciplined. Don't be surprised to see Logan come back Step to this ball. situation. Here's the call. Offense. Five yard penalty. Still fourth down. Don't be surprised to see Logan get back in this situation, fourth and four or less. Appear to be doing the staccato snap count and then snap the ball. I'll guarantee you it's in his repertoire. Staccato? Yeah. Yeah. That's for you defensive linemen to not understand. Told you about the big word thing. Miller also handles the punting for the Pirates. As from midseason on. Paul McClendon on the return. Smacked hard at the 21-yard line. Unloading was Antoine Cook after a seven-yard return of a 34-yard Kevin Miller kick. And so now we will see Cliff Kingsbury, the Texas Tech offense. Sophomore out of New Braunfels. Led the nation in completions. 362 on the year. Ricky Williams, not the same as he was before a severe knee injury last year, but he is back with Shad Williams, Daryl Jones, Derek Doris, and Tim Baker, the Big 12's leading receiver with 69 catches for the year. And on first down to give for very little to Foy Munlin, a true freshman out of Dallas. The offensive line for Texas Tech, Erickson, Sanders, Cecil, Heider, Richards. Defensive front, East Carolina. 3 4 Clay Brooks, Amadou, and Williams. Amadou will need to be a good spy man in the middle for the shovel passes. Number 52, the nose guard. And out of the gun with no hunter, as is their custom. Kingsbury set by Bernard Williams. The ball is loose and recovered by Texas Tech, but inside the 10 is where Ricky Williams desperately jumps on. The four linebackers for the Pirates. Williamson, Lefevre, Griffin, probably the best of the bunch, and Yelverton. And the secondary, Hardy, Adams, and Adams. They are identical twins in Robinson. Antoine is the free safety, Anthony the strong safety. And away to tell them apart. Thank goodness they wear jersey numbers. It's third and 21 for Kingsbury. And he's well protected, but it's batted around and caught by Derek Doris. Off the rebound from Cole Roberts. It's shades of Nebraska, Missouri three years ago in a game of 13. <laughs> Man, you got a good memory. <laughs> Boy, that was really good. It bounced off his feet. <laughs> now, this is tough to coach. How do you coach this, Mark? <laughs> I don't think they do. He just trips there and watch the ball hit him right in the feet. <laughs> then off the chest of the fever. Look at that. That's concentration. And what it does, it gives Texas Tech a little bit of room to punt the ball for field position. Surprised the ball was Greg Lefevre. He had a shot at the interception, so great house will have to kick. And we'll get a chance to see Keith Stokes show his punt returning 
abilities, and they are considerable. But straight up the field. Nobody's touched him yet. Inside the 20. Stokes brings it back for a touchdown. 70 yards. tell you what when you get a punt returner or a kick return where he's not touched you give a lot of credit to the people that are blocking because they're getting some people out of the way Stokes was not touched all he had to do was change direction a couple of times and he was in his second touchdown return of the year and his longest return of the year first extra point was blocked because it was low Miller drives this one through, and it's 13 to nothing. Keith Stokes, for the second time this year, brings one back all the way. And what a start by the Pirates here in Houston. Pretty obvious that uh, East Carolina stung all year from that uh, bowl loss in Mobile to TCU last year because they have started. Tremendous fashion with a 70 yard return by Stokes, making it 13 to nothing, not yet halfway through the first quarter. McClendon, again, on the return for Tech, and he brings this one back 17. Usually on a punt return, Tasha, you got to break a tackle somewhere along the way. But he got great blocks right here. Look at the two blocks by Grover Benton and by Wes Herlocker, and then again on down right here by number 34 Bernard Williams those are the blocks that broke them free again good blocking is going to get you to the end zone when you are untouched like that great special teams work so the Raiders down two scores the second time they get it they start from their 21 Kingsbury pressured hard on the first possession throws it deep on the second one and has it picked off by Kelly Hardy With a marker down after the interception by Hardy, who scored the first and last touchdowns of the regular season. He had a 60-yard interception return the opener against Duke, a 34-yard fumble return in the finale against Southern Miss. And a good start to the postseason for Hardy, sophomore out of Kinston, North Carolina. It will be for the celebration following Hardy's pick. After the interception, we have a dead ball, unsportsmanlike conduct. Players spike the ball after the interception. 15-yard penalty, first and 10. The crowd doesn't like the fact that Hardy spiked the ball. And I assure you that Kingsbury doesn't like the fact that he underthrew yep. his receiver. Hardy's trying to run with him. You see him at the top of the screen. He's in good shape here if the ball's thrown out and farther away. At least the receiver has a shot at it. In this case, Hardy just comes back, makes the easy catch. No chance. No chance for the wide receiver to break it up. With the mark off, they start at the 26. And they run a double reverse bobble, but Marcellus Harris now gets a block by Gerard and fights his way back to the line of scrimmage. John Norman and Devin Lemons finally run him down. Well, they're just opening up the playbook now in East Carolina. And what that does is, again, you have an aggressive defense that keeps them on their heels. Texas Tech does not know what they're going to do. They're having good success running. They're having good success passing. And the strength of this Texas Tech defense is their linebackers. And if they're guessing on the plays, advantage East Carolina. Lawrence Fluges right there, fourth in the country, first of the Big 12 in tackles during the season. And it's 13 again, neutralized so far tonight. Second and 10. Little swing pass, Stokes. It's another block, sprung forward to the 34. And run down there by McClendon. 
Let's send it down to Michelle. Well, you guys mentioned that Steve Logan is pulling out all the stops. That started right after the regular season. It had just snowed in Greenville, but two lanes of the running track were cleared, and Logan had his players out there running. They had to run eight 300s with just 45 seconds in between. Now, for, for perspective, their summer test only requires six 300s. The message was sent early. Logan wants to win this game. Message received loud and clear. Third and two keeper Garrard keeping all the way first down to the 38. David Garrard leading an offense that was second in the conference on the ground. Fourth through the air, second in scoring. And the only team in the conference with 150 plus rushing yards and 200 plus passing yards per game. Their third highest scoring team in school history. And a proud tradition over the last 10 years, begun by Jeff Blake and continued by Marcus Crandall, Gerard, arguably the best of the bunch at this stage. And again, they run Derek Helms, a defensive lineman. <laughs> yeah. He fumbles it, and the Raiders recover it. No. So the bridge factor backfires. And Dorian Pitts comes away with it for Texas Tech. He ran it down near the goal line and picked up a first down on their first scoring drive this time it doesn't work he's doing what he's supposed to do i mean he's just supposed to keep the pile moving forward keep driving he keeps driving his legs but he's got that big them big lineman paws they just can't hold on to the ball i mean there's six guys on him. they're all trying to rip the ball out of there you can't let a defensive lineman have a ball in his hand Logan's smarter than that how did i know you were going to say that Raiders from the 45, give it to Tim Baker for the first time, and the Big 12 leading receiver carries it for about five. He's as close as they have to a tight end, but at 6'5", 202, that's not really the job description you give him. He plays a kind of a hybrid, and he really enjoys it. He's very articulate talking about the fact that he appreciates this offense, and there was a spot for him. This, and he is all about finesse and not speed. Got to run his patterns precisely. Throwing under duress. This was intended for Daryl Jones and incomplete. The Capital One Bowl Week continues on ESPN2 tomorrow at 8.30 Eastern with the Crucial.com Humanitarian Bowl from Boise, Idaho, or Boise State. Will host UTEP, surprising second place finisher in the whack behind quarterback Rocky Perez's 26 touchdown passes. Boise State's Bart Hendricks led the nation in passing. And that's tomorrow evening, 8.30 Eastern from Boise. On third and six, Kingsbury fires it over. Doris tipped up and almost intercepted for the second time by Kelly Hardy. Well, I, I tell you, Bill, I know it's early in the game. You're down 13 zip. I, I go for it here. Fourth and six, you're on. What, uh, 42 of East Carolina? I think I think I go for it here. Well, he is uh, of the Hal Mummy school, and I would expect that he would go for it. But his team is back on its heels, offensively and defensively. His quarterback is rattled. His defense is not playing with assurance. And they really need a spark right here. Don't get cute. You know, they need six yards, seven yard run. Get the, get the first down. Picked up almost half their fourth down tries during the season. They set up a screen, which is read to perfection. Shad Williams had no chance. And Mike, they got cute. Just exactly what, that was not one of their base plays. Right. And uh, you called it. Did not need a cute. You need some sort of hook or curl that gets you eight yards and get the first down. Ty Hunt making the play. I think Coach Leach would like to have that call back. I also think Shad Williams should have cut this one up a little sooner than he did. He almost started going backwards, Coach. But you see that everybody's sitting back in the zone here. Everybody. There was a two-man rush, and even the rushers came off, and that's why there was nothing there. There was an umbrella, very cleverly designed by Tim Rose, that resulted in stopping them short of the first down. Well, short. And so East Carolina takes it over right where Helms fumbled it away to Gordon Pitts at the 45. Gerard with all day to hang one of these gorgeous deep passes up for grabs. And it's caught by Harris at the one. 54 yards. 
Edwards. He took it away from Paul McClendon in a one-on-one -on -one mid air battle. How did McClendon not get the ball? I mean, we, we talked about Gerard hanging the ball up. He hung it up very high that time, and McClendon was right there, Bill. This is another Doug Martinism. He throws this ball as if he were dropping it down a chimney. This is actually an underthrow. He sees Marcellus Harris running deep. He really underthrows the ball. Had he thrown a little farther, it would have been a touchdown. First and goal instead from the one. Good two tight ends. Leonard Henry, touchdown. Touchdown number three for East Carolina. Let's go have four. 37 to go in the first quarter. Uh-oh. <laughs> Steve Logan signaling for one. A lot of people think you should go for two in a situation like this to get the score back to a normal football score of 21. Not so. The odds say you got a better chance of scoring two points by kicking twice than by going for two twice. Well, the way they've been scoring, they'll be down there. Seems like they'll be down there ready to kick again. Miller, a two out of three. Leonard Henry, second team All-Conference USA. Their leading rusher, eight touchdowns during the season. David Garrard takes two plays to move him 55 yards and put him up 20 to nothing. ESPN 2's exclusive presentation of the 2000 Gallery Furniture Houston Bowl is presented by GalleryFurniture.com, the finest, fastest, most affordable store in the world. And in part by Red Lobster. You love seafood, we love seafood. Let's meet at our place tonight and go overboard. Red Lobster, go overboard. And a look at the Wortham Fountain in the theater district of downtown Houston. A look at Leonard Henry, who bounced back from a very disappointing 1999 sophomore season. And has uh, East Carolina up 20 to nothing. Nothing has gone right for Texas Tech. McClendon is just out-wrestled by Harris with a deep ball at the one. He's run out of bounds at the 26. A 24-yard return. Kingsbury will set up from there. Well, we, we, we talked about how impressive this Texas Sex offense is with Kingsbury at the helm, but also on the other side of that, it's also very one-dimensional. And as we know, when you stop one dimension of a one-dimensional team, as East Carolina is doing now, you see you get just three yards of total offense. That's, that was pretty one-dimensional. Yeah. You know, Kingsbury, given time, will get into a rhythm. They get something established. But time has been the problem for them. So they swing this one for Carlos Francis. And uh, probably the best play so far run by the Tech offense. It's good for 16 yards up to the 41. The fastest Red Raider, Francis, redshirt freshman out of Fort Worth, who's run a 10 2, 100 meter. Bill, bread and butter? Bread and butter right now, right? That's a running play. That's Stick a running bread play. Bread and butter, right? That's, that's a jailbreak screen. And it's a basic play in their offense. They know how to execute it. Well, Try to get every snap within 20 seconds previous play going with no huddle getting signals from the sideline Kingsbury has to run for his life again and he sacked for a loss of a couple with the first contact coming from Domain Duckett this offense is totally discombobulated that time nobody looked for the football the reason Kingsbury pulled it down is because none of his men understood the play he looked out there realized he was on his own and took a loss Big step forward, small step back, second and 11. The three-man rush is time to step up and fire a bullet, which is caught near midfield, where it'll be third and short. Darryl even Jones that, on the catch. Yeah. Even that kind of play is like a base run. A nice curl with a ball that's drilled into the open seam in the zone. That's the bread and butter stuff, Mike, that you've been talking about executing. Three wide outs all to the near side. Ricky Williams will take it to the right side. And just enough quicks 
to apparently pick up the first down. That much more like the Ricky Williams before his knee injury in the opener of the 99 season, which ended his 99. And that was a good check by Kingsbury, knowing that Williams had the speed to get the corner. He called the play at the line, then changed it. Saw East Carolina shifted over to three-man receiver side, changed it to that running play, knowing Williams could get the corner. Good, good change of play at the line by Kingsbury, and great speed for the corner by Ricky. Two years ago, fourth best runner in the country. They were talking about the fact that he may be the best Ricky Williams in the state of Texas. One game in Austin, he outrushed the other Ricky Williams in a big tech upset win. He had over 1,500 yards, 144 yards per game two years ago. That was pre-injury, and he says his battle this year has been trusting the repair job on the knee which is not uncommon for people coming off knee surgeries. They know in their head that yep. it's okay, but the, 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 the knee itself has got to convince it's, them. It's more mental than physical. They know it. They've been told it's 100%, but mentally they're not, they're not sure it's there. They snap it and fire it into the field. Just inside the 49. And an oddity, two straight running plays. Williams, who was their leading runner, just 421 yards on the year, tackled by Greg Lefevre. Guys on the Texas Tech defense love Lefevre. They call him Saturday Night Lefevre. He's a lot of fun on the field. He keeps everybody up, and he smashes opposing backs. And I nominate that for a college football nickname of the year. <laughs> Kingsbury again set and a huge loss here back to his 43 Bernard Williams well, and they've given up 30 sacks coming into this game already a couple this game this is a cover check good coverage down the field Kingsbury just hanging in the pocket waiting for somebody to break open it doesn't happen and Kingsbury's had some pressure on him this, uh, tonight already. Yeah, with a two-man rush. I mean, this is inexcusable. Coming from the outside, the right? Two guys from the outside run slap over the tackles. Bernard Williams in particular, a great job. Third sack here in the first quarter. So on third and 16, deep middle and dropped. And that would have been enough for the first had Wes Welker held on. Good pattern, good pass, and he's kicking himself. Yeah, he's got to be. You know what? You're down 20 zip. You've got to be able to find a way to make the play. Kingsbury put it there a little low, but certainly a catchable ball. Walker knows it, too. Walker out of Oklahoma, not heavily recruited at all. Invited walk on to OU's favorite program at Tulsa. And Tech really the only teams that uh, were offering him full rides. So he is, in his own words, black and red for life now. No more an OU fan. Great house to kick it. And well aimed. Good idea. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think I would have done that. Apple One Bowl Week continues on ESPN tomorrow. Four Eastern is the Music City Bowl in Nashville, Ole Miss, West Virginia, and Don Neelan's final game for the Mountaineers at 7.30. Inside.com Bowl from the Bob in Phoenix. Back one ballpark. Pittsburgh, Iowa State Panthers led by the top receiver in the country with the Litnikoff Award winner Antonio Bryant. Iowa State wraps up his best season in 22 years. ESPN Capital One Bowl Week doubleheader tomorrow. 40-yard punt by Greathouse. Four field position, first time for Gerard. Final minute seven of the quarter from the 15. Crawling forward. For a gain of two is Art Brown, true freshman out of winston Sable. Well, we've seen Texas Tech stepping up a little bit on defense. They're going to have to take the brunt of their shoulders right now. Their offense is struggling, so the defense has got to try and get a three and out and give them all the opportunities they can get on offense. Now, Greg McBacken coaches a defense that two years ago when he coordinated the Seattle Seahawks set an NFL record returning 14 touchdowns. Fumbles to interception. So his defense is really, really looking for the strip. And the big play on their end since it's not happening on offense. Corey Morris takes the hitch. All the way to the 30, and that's enough for an East Carolina first down. And a gain of 14. Move the chain, stop the clock, 16 seconds of the quarter. 
Like Mackin's defense led the nation in shutouts this year with three and had another game against North Texas in which North Texas only scored on a defensive touchdown themselves. He can't be pleased with what's happening to his people over there on his side of the ball tonight. Terrific resume. That's three jobs. University of Miami. They led the nation. The Seahawks with that record in Hawaii. Best turnaround in college football history. Winless to nine wins last year. That's the end of the first quarter. All East Carolina. Striking with a big plays to lead 20 to nothing in the first gallery furniture Houston Bowl. They shit on the back. 1-800-COLLECT presents Ava Save-A-Lot. What's in your wallet? Back in Houston, East Carolina leading 20 to nothing. And just a few minutes ago, John Norman, the senior linebacker for Texas Tech, took over the huddle on the sidelines. He got in the faces of his defensive teammates and said, we have to execute every play. From one play to the next, there can be no arguing about who might have made a mistake. Just go to the next play. Dave, we'll see how they respond. Yeah, John, who will uh, finish this game and then turn his attention to his brother Josh's Oklahoma date in the Orange Bowl for the National Championship. His brother, the Sooners' top running backs. We begin the second quarter with a run up the middle and a fake very well carried out. Rashawn Burns, the tight end, rambles for 15 yards. And you've been ahead about half the defense following Gerard, thinking that was a quarterback option keeper. In the first quarter, here's how dominant East Carolina was. Seven to two first downs, minus 16 on the ground because of three sacks of Kingsbury. 22 total yards. They're outgained by 130. They averaged 362 a game. 22, if my math is correct, would be 88 for the game. How's that? You need to pick up the pace. They got a good term, Dave. That's what they got to do. Enterprise marching again to their 44. Gerard play action. A deep out, not quite deep enough, and incomplete intended for DeLeo Dodd. Can you do long division, Mike? If I got a calculator or an abacus or something like that, pencil and paper. You wouldn't know an abacus if it hit you in the mouth. You certainly couldn't spell it, that's for sure. You know, I want to go back to what M Michelle said about John Norman taking over the huddle. You need you need a guy like that. Every team, Bill Lunch Green needs a guy like that to yeah. take charge of a huddle and shake some things up. And you could tell in the meeting we had with him last yeah. night, yeah. he was going to be that guy. They'll make a run. You can count on that. His last game, this is it for him. A short toss, maybe a backwards pass to Stokes. And he's got another first down to the 44 of Tech. A gain of 11. Dean Stokes against the Tech defense that, no matter what they look like tonight, ran up some really impressive individual seasons. That is amazing. And Flugence is fourth in the country, but to have that many ranked in the top of the Big 12, a conference like the Big 12, is impressive. Now, certainly they're struggling tonight, no doubt about that, but that is a fantastic season stat. Gerard, over there hanging another one deep. Finds single coverage, drops it down to Kimney Cole. Touchdown! Derek Collier, 44 yards. The Pirates score again. That absolutely amazes me, Dave, how he throws it so high. And the coverage was right there. And it just dropped down like Santa coming down the chimney. This is beautiful because he's under pressure and makes a perfect throw. Miller out for another extra point. That is first one blocked. And has been perfect thereafter. 27 to nothing, East Carolina. Work is everything. A token fake, set the feet, nice step forward, ignore the pressure, follow through. This time, not an underthrow, but a perfect throw. Now, this is amazing. Good coverage by Briggs. Now, he's looking at the head. He's not looking back. He sees the head up. 
Ah, uh, there's the mistake. If you see the head and the hands going for the ball, you've got to try and make a play on it. He kept looking at the receiver and started losing a little bit of distance. One of the most impressive things is how he has spread it around to guys who didn't do much during the season. He's gone to uh, Collier here at only seven catches all year, one for a touchdown. He's hit Corey Floyd, who had only four catches all year. So it's not just the favorite targets that uh, are benefiting this terrific start from David Garrard. He throws to everybody. He was recruited by University of Central Florida and told that he could be the next Dante Culpepper. I believe it. I really do. Dante's doing rather well himself, but it looks like David not only is an excellent college quarterback, but has a future for himself. You know what impressed me with that, though, is on the replay, you saw Aaron Hunt from Texas Tech hitting him just as he was throwing it. I mean, that ball went a long way for not him being able to get everything into it on the throw. What a, what a strong arm. A strong start. Nine out of 12, 151 yards. And a touchdown in a little less than 16 minutes. Yet another kickoff. Sean Williams on this return. Raiders can benefit from a big return. They get an okay return out to the 24. Capital One Bowl Week. Continues. Join us on Friday and all day bowl of rama on ESPN. Our coverage begins at 1.30. The two conference champions do battle. Number 22, Colorado State. Number 23, Louisville in the Liberty Bowl. Then the Chick-fil-A Peach matchup. Number 17, Georgia Tech at LSU. Last stop, San Diego. Number 12, Texas against 11th ranked Oregon in the Culligan Holiday Bowl at 8.30 Eastern, 5.30 Pacific. And if you're Done with all three of those. There's yet more coming. The Outback Bowl on New Year's Day. And the Alamo on the 30th. Miles to go before we sleep. Swing pass inside run now, Wes Welker. A cup of only a couple. Well, I, I guess if you're going to look at the glass half full for Texas Tech, be happy they're not a running team because they would almost have to abandon it. The game plan right now, they are a passing team, so they can still stay within their game plan to try and chip away. So far, seconds for a lot of two and three yard game. Shovel pass. One of the favorite plays in their arsenal. Sean Williams. East Carolina, well coached to look for that. Well coached to sit back, play the zones, be soft up front, pressure with two spy with the middle guard and tackle everybody before they make first downs and it's working got to at least look for a first down here on third and four they swing for sean williams and in a race to try to get to the 33 he is not going to make it kelly hardy beat him to the sideline this uh, should not even be close enough for a measurement i wouldn't think they've got him marked right at the 31. Uh, you would expect <laughs> he's, he's gonna go for well, it. You would expect yeah, he needs to punt yeah. this football. Quentin Greathouse is nowhere near the, the playing field. He needs to punt this football and see if he can retrieve his that Brook Trout stare out of his player's eyes. Under center for the first time. And they tried unsuccessfully to draw the Pirates offside. Couldn't do it. Call timeout. Now they'll kick with 12-16 to go in the second quarter. The Raiders being routed. Well, Kingsbury unsuccessfully tried to draw East Carolina offsides. Now we see Clinton Greathouse on fourth and one. And Stokes already with a 70-yard touchdown return on his night's ledger. Time Greathouse angled it away from him. Not this time. Returnable from 25, and here he goes again. Met by a couple of black jerseys at the 36, a 42 yard kick, and return this time of just 10. East Carolina had one special team's full power early with a blocked extra point and immediately made up for it with the onside kick. Came right back with the 70 yard punt return by the guarding speedster. 
Stokes, who's just a great player, and every time he touches the ball, Mike, I get excited. Can't get your snacks when these guys are on special teams. Gotta stay in the fucking shoes. Gerard back to it. Leonard Henry swinging it wide. One of the better defended plays, and yet he still picks up about four yards. Dave, I mean, you couldn't have said it any perfectly. I mean, if you just look at the, the way this game is going right now, Texas Tech is struggling for every yard they're getting. East Carolina, and you just said it, that was one of the better defense plays by Texas Tech, and they still get four, four and a half yards out of it. That's the way this game is going so far. Boy, that leads to fatigue and frustration on the defensive side, doesn't it, Mike? Oh, incredible. I mean, you almost overcompensate and try and attack too much, and then you get burned with a big play. Arnie Powell went in motion. Gerard loops that oh, one yeah. dangerously, and it is intercepted by Norman, who had three during the season. Big play defender, senior Midland, Texas. John Norman makes the biggest play yet for Texas Tech. This is confidence that you can still make the throw for Gerard. He knew he had to go over the top on the screen. They're up 27 zip. He feels, I'll take the chance. I'll try and get it there. Puts a little too much on it. What a great play by Norman. Just a little too much mustard on that screen pass. Yeah, and you can credit Devin Lemons, number 37, with putting the pressure on and forcing the lofted throw. Very poor throw. One of the few poor things that Garage's done in this game. And the main man, the leader over there, has taken advantage of him. That was not supposed to come down the chimney. <laughs> That's just exactly right. Now, can the Raiders cash it in from the 41? They run Ricky Williams. Or about four, Vontae Leach, freshman inside linebacker out of Rowland, North Carolina, on the tackle of Williams, who has been granted an extra year. Right. Yeah, he's, exactly. He's decided to take it, too. A lot of thought earlier that he might want to graduate with his uh, original freshman class and call it a career after this year, but last month announced he will come back in 2001. Completely different job description than under Spike Dykes. That's got to be caught. And by the usually reliable King Scoble, it's through his hands and complete. Well, we've seen a couple drops now tonight. I mean, this is a big drive for Texas Tech. They've got to be able to cash in on the turnover. When you're down by this, your defense puts you in a pretty good position. You've got to get something out of this. I guarantee you they'll go for it on fourth down up there in the situation here. They wouldn't be faking it this time. Nope. Only one out of five picking up third down. Lots of time. Finally, Kingsbury on target. And the drive does continue as Derek Doris, their second leading receiver. 56 catches beats Kelly Hardy's coverage. One thing, Bill, I don't think you're going to see a lot from the Texas Tech receivers. They're big guys. You're not going to see a lot of yards after the catch. They make the catch secure the ball. And then a lot of times, as you saw there, they get brought down. That's right, but especially because of the style of defense that East Carolina's playing, because they're, they've got a, a web out there, and the web converges. It's like an amoeba, and it closes on the ball with several tacklers every time. Yeah. Kingsbury, again, forced to run for his life. And another sack and a loss of five. Let's send down below to Michelle Tafoya. Well, Dave, Cliff Kingsbury still trying to erase demons of his senior year in high school in this very building. He played his final high school game here, suffered a 46-23 loss in the state 5A semifinals. He told us he'd love to shake those demons. Coming back into this building, reminded of that game all over again. Played for his father at New Braunfels High School, who attended a Hal Mummy clinic and changed their offense to the uh, lead style for his senior year. And before that point, he was not looked at as someone who would be highly recruited, but given the chance to throw it his senior year, he caught the attention of Leach. It was pretty much Texas Tech, Southwest Texas State. And uh, Kingsbury went west to Lubbock. And all those black shirts look like they're covered in that secondary or converged upon quickly. That's because that's what's happening. This is a very well-coached defensive plan. Closing on the ball, Coach Tim Rose, everything working that he installed for this week so far. Pirates come with a blitz, picked up. Pearl is behind and open. 
Carlos Francis at the 50. Picked their spot, came with a blitz, played man-free coverage. The receiver was able to beat the coverage, and Kingsbury could not deliver. There has just been too much pressure on him tonight. He is not himself. Carlos Francis open again. He was open on the deep ball earlier. We've seen receivers dropping the ball. Now we see the quarterback not as accurate with his throw. And we see Chris Burkholz. 66% during his career. This will be one of the longest of his career if he's good from 50. Out of the hold of Eric Rosellis. This one will not make it. Close. Not quite enough. Still 27 to nothing. East Carolina 10-06 in the second quarter. Where Tim Rose's East Carolina defense has done a job on Texas Tech. I'll say, but I'll, you won't see him blitzing again anytime real soon because he tried one, the guy was running wide open. Tim wasn't pleased with that, I assure you. From the 32, Leonard Henry. Looks like he's stopped after a gain of about two, and he puts his helmet down and keeps the legs churning forward. Next thing you know, it's a pickup of about seven, and that is pretty much how this first half has gone for East Carolina. Well, it's, it's the Christmas season. It's a season, season of giving, and East Carolina is giving it to Texas Tech right now any way they want. It, it's a, they're just controlling, controlling everything. I think the key has been the defensive plan. It's absolutely confused the offensive unit of Texas Tech at every step. The offense that's it with big play after big play. Gerard's option pitch. Henry's got plenty of room for another first down. They just keep grinding it out. They only have one guy. I mean, you play the option. You've got to play the quarterback and the pitch man. On the touchdown run by Gerard, they had one man on the pitch man, nobody on the quarterback. This time, they have one man on the quarterback. You see right there, and nobody on the pitch man. Somebody's got to roll up. They've got to roll up, and you've got to cover your man when the option is coming. First, you have to recognize it. Then you have to take care of your responsibility. This is deck defense. Fourth best in the conference here in the year. They have surrendered 340 by halftime tonight. And they have got to be tuckered out, too. On the field a long time. Gerard steps back, fires. Intercepted. The second pick for Texas Tech. Mark Washington, the senior free safety. Well, that, that one, Gerard will never be, I mean, he, he certainly didn't look anybody off there. He went for the, they faked the hitch, and he looked at his receiver the whole time, and Washington did a great job of knowing that. See, Washington just locking in on him, locking in on him, and you see him locking the whole way. And he comes right over. He saw the hitch, faked the hitch, and he just started drifting toward that receiver. Garrard never looked him off. Washington just kept going with it. Right in front of Collier. The senior out of Sweeney, Texas, who had two picks during the season, turns it back over to Kingsbury at the 27. Green pass, boy, are they ready for that? Shard Williams reverses field and loses even more yardage. Let's check in quickly with Chris Fowler on how the return to the ice is going for Mario Lemieux. Uh, it's going very well, Dave. In Pittsburgh, Lemieux earlier had assisted on a goal by Yaramir Yager. Here, Yager returns the favor. Lemieux, a one-timer. Lemieux has two assists, and that goal is first game since April 97. SportsCenter has coverage of it tonight. Dave? Like he never left. Makes me want to make a comeback. <laughs> Uh, let me talk to you about the game. <laughs> Meet me in the parking lot. Kingsbury, at times, can't find anybody open, so he throws on the run incomplete. Dean Stobel was the target. Even when he has time, Rose's coverage package does the job. If this is not a contribution to anybody that understands anything about football. But everything that can go wrong is going wrong for Texas Tech's offense. And the reason is 
they don't have answers for this defensive plan. It really is like a spider's web, and it closes wherever the ball goes. Nobody was open. Who gets to call the third and 20 play, Bill? <laughs> you can't find anybody to help you if you're the head coach. How about a quarterback draw? Good call. About as well as anything, and so they'll have to get Great House out there. And in our never ending quest to be at the cutting edge, technically, what we're going to show now is reflective of the net hunting average for Great House in Texas Tech. That red line, indicative of where the average takeover spot would be for East Carolina if this is the average net. Punt. You see the yellow line, that's what they need for the first down. The red line right at the 49 would reflect Texas Tech's net punting average distance. This is a pretty good one. Brooks with flags down, loses it, picked up. And the Pirates hang on to it thanks to Brandon Rayner. They've got a lot to unpile now. 44-yard kick. Well, Bill, it's going to be that halo rule, isn't it, Bill? I mean, he didn't give enough room to touch it. I think so, but yeah. that was 15 yards better than his normal net punting average. But let's see what happens on the call because that'll obviously have an impact. Yeah, he was hit almost, almost as soon as he caught the ball. Bill Lamontier and his Big Ten crew. Agreeing. So here's what I mean by that. They'll get a five yard penalty here because there was interference with the returner, which means that this is 10 yards better than the normal net punt average for Texas Tech. And net punting is one of the most important statistics in football because it establishes interference with the opportunity. Position. Two yard radius foul. Five yard penalty. First down. Interference with the opportunity. I like that. Interference with the opportunity to catch the ball. Yeah. Good call. Makes it sound un-American. <laughs> 6.57 to go in the half. It is. Steve Logan up 27. ESPN 2's exclusive presentation of the 2000 Gallery Furniture Houston Bull is brought to you by Morgan Stanley Dean Witter. Move your money, get well connected. And by your local Lincoln dealer. Lincoln, American luxury. First postseason game in the city of Houston and in the Astrodome in 13 years since the 1987 Blue Bonnet Bowl, the last in that series. Tonight, the first in the new series. Gallery Furniture Houston Bowl, East Carolina all the way. They again run the, the big tight end right up the middle. Second time that Rashawn Burns has had a chance to carry. Boy, they are just... Any, anything they run is working. Yeah, Rashad. I mean, look, look at that first down right there. I mean, that, that says it all. Rashad hanging on to that football after that other big guy dropped one. That defensive guy. Second and negative point seven. <laughs> <laughs> you can't defend that. Oh, boy, for that. Just shy of midfield. Gerard. Again, Burns gets the call this time with a catch and another first down inside the 40 of Texas Tech. Let's send it down to Michelle to Porter. Well, David, you guys were talking about the defense. Greg McMacken came to Texas Tech, wanted the defense to have a personality. I asked Lawrence Flugens about that yesterday, and he began to recite. And then John Norman joined in. They said in unison, we are an attacking, aggressive, swarming defense that gang tackles, makes big plays, and plays with emotion. They have repeated that mantra hundreds of times. It distinguishes their characteristic. Have they lost it today, Mike? Well, I tell you what, they not lost it. East Carolina is beating it out of them right now. Driving again with option toss. Down to the 25-yard line goes Christian Gilliam. This is an equal opportunity offense tonight because Gilliam is normally a linebacker. Let them carry the ball. Kevin the defensive Curtis. lineman Derek Helms carry the ball. Everybody gets the shot. Everybody's getting to do everything here. But Mike, you talked about option responsibility. Kevin Curtis, number 31, the strong safety, had pitch responsibility here, but he's got an excellent blocker right in his face. Look right there. Excellent job of blocking downfield by Terrence Copper. 
true freshman. Well, from the 25, they march on. Burns. Yeah, you know, and going back to what Michelle said about their defense and the attitude they want to have, you know, I think it's a combination of a couple of things. I mean, you can only say it so many times. You have to go out and do it. And they've done it a lot. There's no doubt about that. But one thing East Carolina is doing is by the play selection, by being successful with different people and different plays, they're keeping, again, that defense on their heels. So it's a little more difficult to swarm when sometimes you're guessing on what the play is going to be or your reaction time is a little slower. Option toss. Gilliam carried it one time during the regular season. His second on this drive alone, and he runs into Devin Leonard. Texas Tech, a proud defense. They hit their uh, rock bottom period, a 56 3 loss, record margin of defeat to Nebraska. And from that point on, they felt like they made a, a much better accounting of themselves. And they were uh, fourth ranked in the Big 12. Yardage surrendered per game, but tonight all positive stats pretty much forgotten as East Carolina has thrown over them and run through them. And they make a stand on third and four. Another carry with a flag down this time. In fact, three flags at the end of the run by Henry. And a very well carried out fake by Gerard. Somebody grabbed somebody's face mask. I don't know if it was the running back or the defender. There's all kind of face mask grabbing going on there. <laughs> you ever see offsetting face masks? I wonder if you can get it here. <laughs> Whatever can go wrong does. Five yard face mask. Defense. Penalty results in a first down. <laughs> Blacks came in from everywhere. They don't, they, don't, they don't like when you touch the face mask. But a lot of times you'll see a stiff arm of an offensive player that gets up in the face of a defender as well. But this was a defensive player, Mike. It was Mark Washington, number eight. He really just put his hand up there for an instant. I'm not sure he should have been called, but he was. From the six, first and goal. And Henry dragged his hackler all the way to the two. Mark Washington had him at the five. And four yards later, Henry's finally down. There, there's no swarm. I mean, I mean, the mantra that, that Michelle told us, there's no swarm here. They're there. They're there, but they're not there, Bill. They're, they're, they're in the area, but they're not there making the play. They're not putting their head across to the off-arm pit and driving through them the way Coach McMackin taught them. Quick play here. Nearly 300 yards already. Gerard intended for Stokes. That might be fortunate, actually, that it was incomplete because Antoine Alexander had him pretty well covered. Yeah, Antoine decided, I think I'm going to go ahead and hit this guy anyhow. <laughs> and nobody's hit him all night. He just needs to take at least one shot. Boy, any, any kind of a small victory here for Texas Tech. Hold him to a field goal. Don't let him get in the end zone somehow, some way. Hey, you know, we keep talking about what they're not doing. We certainly have to give equal time to what East Carolina is doing on offense. Incredible execution. Two tight ends. And a give for a walk-in Leonard Henry touchdown. His second. Well, Texas Tech thought they'd put that Nebraska performance behind them, but right now it's the East Carolina Cornhuskers in effect. This is this is turning into a woodshed game, a woodshed game fellas. Texas Tech getting dragged out behind it and just beaten up right now. I mean, they're they're being out executed and out hit every every single facet of the game. have run up 34 points. Still almost four and a half to go in the first half. Henry has a pair of one-yard touchdown runs. This is Lance. Latest touchdown. One-yard run by Leonard Henry and uh, Raider <laughs> Red, even more downcast than usual. Well, I'll say he should have some Band-Aids on his face for the way. That's Yosemite Sam. Guys are getting beat up. Those eyes look crossed there, kind of like the players unfortunately that's not Yosemite Sam no, that's, that's his cousin Raider yeah. Red
Oh. Quite often mistaken. Wes <laughs> Welker decides to accept the touchback. Since that first uh, PAT was blocked, Miller's done a terrific job. Credit to the O-line for this fine offensive performance thus far for East Carolina, particularly the left guard right here. Walker pulls out, blocks Curtis, the leading tackler. Now watch as Henry goes into the end zone. Derek Briggs, number 39, has a chance to step up and make the play and simply does not. He remains in the end zone, and Henry joins him there. Ricky Williams with a huge hole through the middle. The best run of the night for Texas Tech, 22 yards. And let's send it for a halftime preview to Chris Fowler. Well, Dave, coming up at halftime, we'll have highlights of Marshall's come from behind win in the Motor City Bowl. You choose news on the coaching carousel, how that might affect the preparations for Florida State with the Orange Bowl. And Mac Brown makes it official, naming him a starter for the Holiday Bowl. Rod Gilmore joins me at the half, Dave. Well, again, in question for Texans because Major Applewhite's been working out uh, bad knee and all. Well, some question. Would it be Sims or Applewhite? Boy, Munlin blasted by Kent Neely, redshirt freshman out of Clarendon, North Carolina. Uh, Chris Fowler didn't mention anything about any Texas Tech highlights at halftime. Uh, We're not gonna see there, there are none at all this right. point. All right. well, a lot of East Carolina highlights. You are ruthless, Michael. Well, you know what? I guarantee you that in halftime, the coaches are going to be ruthless, too. You There's going to so? be a gut check in a locker room I, for I Texas Tech. I think you may be right. Time for a score and something to build on, maybe. Welker. How about a first down? Here's yeah. a first down. <laughs> Baby steps, huh? It's progress. <laughs> pass that he gets off without being sacked his progress. Four sacks for a loss of 31 yards and only four first downs. For Mike Leach, this really is a teaching opportunity to teach his men how to respond in these situations. He's checking out again. A few times he takes it under center to give straight ahead for Ricky Williams. Day of two. Capital One Bowl Week will continue on ESPN with the Sanford Independence Bowl Saturday at 8 Eastern from Shreveport. Mississippi State and Wayne Madkin against Texas A&M. Jackie Sherrill present against the ghost of Sherrill past in the Independence. Lamar Toons leading the Aggies. 14 touchdowns. That is Sunday, 8 Eastern from Shreveport. Second at 8. Again, Kingsbury has to scramble. This time manages the line of scrimmage and then coughed it up after the whistles had him down. No fumbles in the third nick. Kingsbury not, not escaping very well. I mean, if you're going to escape, maybe he's got to learn to throw it away a little bit, come back and live another day, or try and escape to the outside of the camera. That's where East Carolina is bringing a lot of their pressure. 5.4 yards per completion. Not much to build on. He did 35. Average is nearly 300 yards passing per game. This is Daryl Jones. And to the 35, he has a first down. I told you you wouldn't see Tim Rose blitz again for a good while, and it's been a while. Every time he does it, they pick it up, and the receiver's wide open. This time, Kingsbury hits the receiver. Nice game for a first down, so I'm going to say it again. I don't think you'll see Coach Rose coming after him very often. We haven't seen the tech offense hit a rhythm yet. They may be in one now. Another nice scanner over the middle to Jones. Darrell has it first and goal. At the seven again of 28 yards knocked out by Grover Benton. Now, Bill, how much of this is East Carolina backing off a bit? 
in their zones, coming back and giving the underneath stuff, or is it just Texas Tech getting in their rhythm? It's Texas Tech executing. This is the same defense we've been seeing. This is a three deep zone, and it's a nice crossing pattern with a rhythm pass. One, two, three, four, five, set throw on rhythm. Tough to rush, tough to defend. More first downs on this series than they had the entire game before the series. First and goal, seven. They come after Kingsbury. He lets it go. Touchdown. Corey Doris. The difference is execution. The protection is good. The pass is thrown on rhythm. The route is run with precision, and it's a touchdown. That's what happened in this drive. So the young man, Kingsbury, has regained his composure, and his receivers are helping him out for a change. And you see not a lot of celebration out of Kingsbury. He knows they have a long way to go, and it's just about a half to get there. It's it's score and get right back to business. You can build on a team that will fight back, and that's what this one is doing. Bird goals 35 out of 36 on his PATs. That one just goes back inside the left upright. 34 7. Kingsbury drives him 80 yards and eight plays. Something that he hasn't done a lot tonight, in part, he hasn't had a lot of time. He gets the ball, does clip, makes his decision, and throws it. Doesn't hold it, doesn't slide in the pocket. This is when this offense works at its best. Doris runs a skinny post, a little slant right inside the corner, who's expecting help coming inside out. The help can't get there quickly enough because the throw is so well executed. Now, you can't stop here. Texas Tech, me, they have two timeouts to go. See what East Carolina is going to do with this ball. Are they going to try and run the clock out and go into halftime? Texas Tech, if they stop them on first, should use their first downs, try and get the ball back, and try and get something else before this half ends. Well, Steve Logan, I can answer this. Steve Logan very seldom does what you expect him to do. He's a wizard. He's a college professor coaching football. That was his original intent, was to become a college professor. So that's how he does this. Whatever you think he's going to do, he usually does something else. The only thing we all know he does is make people run. Do you think Mike Leach <laughs> would try an onside kick? There's a lot of hands guys. I out think there. that would be a bad mistake. Yeah, I agree. I wouldn't do it here and give I wouldn't give East Carolina that field position. Kick, kick it ball down deep. deep. Yeah. That was ugly. Fumble. <laughs> Fumble. High, and High and short to Stokes. Uh-oh. Boy, he worth the ticket. <laughs> Who had a play? Oh, as he play. doubles back, he loses about half of what he had on the return as Jason Wesley runs him down. He'll net only 10 yards on the return. I guarantee he ran 70. We've seen some poor special teams play by Texas Tech. Now we see some excellent play because Jason Wesley, number 30, has contained responsibility on just this exact kind of cutback. There he is. He gets a hold of the Speedy Stokes and gets him on the ground. Nice job, Jason. Stokes, maybe the biggest play of the half, a 70-yard punt return. With 29. With 26. Gerard with a draw play. And for Art Brown, the end of a couple. Now, Paul, now why aren't you using your time out here? I do not agree with this at all. Stop the clock. There are times, and I'm going to play the devil's advocate because I actually agree with you, Mike, but there are times when you just want to get your team back in the locker room. Something good has just happened. You don't want to give the other offense that's just been ripping you another opportunity to come back down the field because Steve Logan will throw this thing up in a heartbeat. I mean, way up. <laughs> okay, that's two timeouts. Not using him here to snap at 45 seconds. And Brown spins after being hit behind the line and drags about four or five Red Raider defenders forward for five. Such determination. I mean, you, you got, you've got the Texas Tech players looking to the sideline here, wondering why is coach call a timeout. I, Bill, I, I completely disagree with this. Try and get the stop. Try and do something. You're down by a ton. I agree with you, but I think what's happening is Coach Leach wants to get in the locker room and see if he can calm his troops down and don't give these guys a chance to get yet another one. 
His offense had gained 36 yards until that 80-yard touchdown march in the closing minutes of the first half. So a little something maybe to build on after a disastrous first half. And a 34-7 East Carolina lead in the gallery furniture at Houston Bowl. Let's head to Chris Fowler in the studio. All right, Dave, thank you. Rod, a very little something to build on after falling behind 34-0. Clear difference in the effort and the aggression between these two teams in the first half. Well, I think the difference in the first half was Steve Logan's approach to this game. He came out very aggressively, throwing some deep passes, an onside kick even. That shows you he was really into this ball game. On the other hand, I think Texas Tech fell apart. I don't think the effort was there in the second quarter, and they're going to have to find a way to get it back in that locker room at halftime. That could be the big factor, but it's also a slightly ominous note for Big 12 fans because this is an Oklahoma team that ha hosted Texas Tech. It only scored 27 points, and that Tech defense not able to even slow down East Carolina in the first half. And, uh, this is a woodshed beating thanks to David Gerard. 27 point lead for the Pirates at the break. Well, Texas Tech's going to have a ways to go to make this one a good ball game. East Carolina scoring almost at will. The second half from Houston is coming up. Back at the Astrodome, 34 to 7. East Carolina leads Texas Tech. As we get set for the start of the second half, the first gallery furniture, Houston Bowl, total domination by the Pirates. Their offense did it however they wanted, going long, going short, running up the middle. Anything worked. They did. The professorial Steve Logan, the head football coach at East Carolina, had his favorite pupil, David Gerard, execute his teaching to near perfection. The option on the goal line, easy touchdown because of an excellent read by Gerard. The deep ball while being hit, Beautiful job by Collier to outstrip Derek Briggs, the cornerback, and make the deep catch. That encapsulates what Steve Logan tries to get done on offense, Mike. And they were getting it done just as well on defense. They were uh, Kingsbury in the pocket for Texas Tech just had absolutely no time uh, to throw the ball. And that's what their offense is. It is timing. Too busy trying to sidestep rushes. Four sacks for East Carolina in the first half. Bernard Williams had two of them. They'd given up 30 coming into the season, but this offense for Texas Tech is predicated on three-step, five-step passing in rhythm, and East Carolina has not let them be in rhythm at all. That's been a key for that defense. Now, the halftime talks, a little bit different, I would <laughs> think. It's a lot more fun to give the Logan, let's keep it going talk. Logan, let's keep it going, but he really wants to keep the hammer down. I don't think they're just going to come out here and sit on it. Neither do I think Texas Tech is going to roll over. I think they'll come back and make a run. I really do. Let's send it down below to Michelle Tafoya. Well, funny you should mention what Steve Logan might have said in the locker room. I spent halftime in the locker room with East Carolina. Logan waited until just the last second, got his team around him, stood on a table above them, and said in a clear, loud, and emphatic voice, that is a proud program over there. You can expect them to raise their level of play. If you want to win this game, you must raise your level of play. The time to put this team away is now. While we're on top, let's go out there and put this team away, Dave. So, uh, as you suspected, not one to sit on the laurels of a 34-7 halftime lead. Steve Logan looking for more of the same. <laughs> I got to believe Mike Leach in the other locker room was looking for something to break. <laughs> a chalkboard, a chair. It'd be interesting what that conversation was. I'm telling you, that stuff's overrated about throwing things and yelling and screaming. Even especially, if you're really mad, Bill? Especially when you got a team back on their heels. Yeah, especially when you're really mad. Then you say dumb things and your team goes in the tank more. Then receiving the second half kickoff, Wes Welker. It's Miller's kick. Boy, the coverage for the flag down. Again, very solid by ECU. Over 13 yards on the return by Welker. I don't know, Bill, as we wait for the call, it, it's a face mask. I, it, is testing someone's manhood in the locker room at halftime, a, 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 is it gone? I, I got to believe there's a place for it occasionally in a, in a sport it like this. It is a face mask on the kicking team. Five-yard penalty, first down. It's absolutely not gone. My opinion is that you use that with a confident team that's playing a crummy game. You get in their face and you kick them in the rear, but this team here is not confident. They haven't beaten anybody with a winning record this year. You don't pound them down until they've done something to earn being equipped on. Danger gave him 
most of their confidence were well played defeats to Kansas State late the year to Oklahoma. Ricky Williams sparked the 80 yard touchdown drive at the end of the first half, and he starts the second half of the game about three. They're up game 304 to 116, and 80 of the 116 total yards for Tech came on that late touchdown drive. East Carolina not hurt at all by three turnovers. Well, you look at the yardage for Texas Tech, 17 rushing, 99 passing. That's about the 82-18 split you talked about at the top of the show, Dave, and pass and run, but I think they wanted a little more yards with that, though. A lot more yards. <laughs> we start this half with two straight runs for Williams. Years ago, the fourth leading rusher in the nation. And in this system, uh, strictly a bit player when you're only running it 18 percent of the time that's right and what happens when you when you run it that seldom is your offensive line gets a little soft in the running game they don't really get down the three-point stance and come off with flat backs and get used to knocking people back off the ball so it's tough to mount a sustained running attack his first two runs here in the third net eight yards on third and two the toss should have the first down for Welker. And right at the 35. And football traditionalists would say, good gosh, why do you throw the ball on third and two? Because that's your offense. You run your offense. If you're confident that you can throw and catch on third and two, then that's what you run. This time they execute it. If they do this and go down the field right now, that'll bode very well for a good second half. They hit a rhythm late in the first half. That's kind of a balloon pass, but look at Daryl Jones run with it. Breaks a tackle and takes it in right up for the official <laughs> signals touchdown. 65 yards. Wow. Right over Benny Fruna, <laughs> the field judge. What a great job. Buddy. He got his hands up there on the single that touchdown. What a play. Boy, that was kind of a lob screen. We saw Garrard throw one of those East Carolina get it picked off. Kingsbury does the same thing. What a great job of running the ball. It was exactly what Steve Logan did not want to happen. Just exactly what he feared. So all of a sudden, you got 14 unanswered tech points. And you have something you didn't see on that sideline until late in the second quarter, smiles. And what you don't see from the white shirts of East Carolina is that swarming, aggressive defense that you saw in the first half. Arm tackling, diving behind Jones, underestimating his speed and his strength. Look right here at the end of the play. Yeah, the ref. That's pitiful. <laughs> That's pitiful. Yeah, but we're not... <laughs> Well, he just fell down. He didn't get run over to his credit, but watch him get his arms up. Look at that. That's a great job out of him right there. <laughs> That's a tough referee right there. <laughs> I'm sorry, Bill. You were making a great point. I apologize. You're not for... sorry. You're enjoying seeing <laughs> the rep getting drilled. But he, but he, he is a tough it. guy. He did a heck of a job. <laughs> Antoine Adams, Anthony Adams, Antoine it was, number 13, one of the twins, should have had him on the ground about the 11 or 12-yard line. But he's been resting on his laws as well. The halftime was too long for the guys in white. There's nothing that you can say to make them think this could be a tough game. And now they got a tough game. That's exactly what Jim's telling them. Yep, Jim Rose over there certainly is going to jump out of a bit saying this one is nowhere near over. That's what he's telling them. Well, we've got Stokes back there. Quickly gets seven the other way. And short kick return from the 12. This time only 10 on the return. And now what happens to the black shirts? Suddenly their special teams are doing a better job. Terrell's down there making a tackle on a guy they couldn't tackle a while ago. And the worm has turned if they can just keep the hammer down on defense. Will, yeah, will the mantra come out that Michelle talked about in the first half? Will they swarm? Will you see emotion? Will you see that attack style that Texas Tech plays? It's a huge series. Eric McMackage unit has got to follow suit. Now the offense has done its job twice in a row. Play fake, Gerard throws it away. On 
ABC Sports, January 2nd from New Orleans at 8 Eastern. The Nokia Sugar Bowl, and this may be for a half of a national championship. Number two, Miami. Number seven, Florida. First meeting between the in-state rivals since 87, and Miami still looking to gain a share of the national championship. If they beat the Gators, if Florida State beats Oklahoma, you can bet they will claim a share of the national title. And those of you want to listen to that game on ESPN Radio, we're going to be there calling we'll it. We'll be there. Yes, we will. Gerard, option keeper to the 30. And third and two coming. Turn on your TV, turn the sound down, and tune us in. There you go. That's it. We get to make the trip down to New Orleans, huh? Gerard, Gerard uh, really does have a lot of Dante Culpepper. Oh, well, yeah. Boy, seeing him on the field before the game, his legs, I mean, they're, they're huge. I mean, they are truly running back legs. He has what my friend Homer Smith calls a gifted arm to go with those legs. Again, he keeps first down, 35-yard line. Only three Red Raiders outweigh the East Carolina quarterback. Two defensive tackles, and Aaron Hunt by just four pounds at the defensive end outweighs him. Again, Bill on the option. Only one person. I believe it was just Aaron Hunt. I think that was it. He's the only one out there. Watch the only man getting option. The only man is right there. You, the one man. That's it. There's no one coming up here, and there's no one still in there. It's because they're being blocked. See? No roller. No the corner up. The corner's got it. Somebody. Somebody's got to roll up. Nelson. Samayan Jones. Henry, who has two touchdowns to midfield. Pickup of 16 yards, tackled by Dorian Pitts. Man, they're just blocking them now. That's the old counter old play that the Redskins made famous. You pull the backside guard and tackle. The backside guard kicks out. Leads up in there with the backside tackle. Samayan Jones, nice job. Good running to bounce to the outside and then cut it back up inside. Take the tough hit. Hang on to the football. Nice running by Henry. Clinton, North Carolina. Just across the 50. Come after Gerard. Gets it off anyway. And complete for a first down. Arnie Powell for 11 yards. And let's send it down to Michelle to fourth. Well, something else, you guys, that David Garrard has is a lot of responsibility right now. The most dramatic moment in the locker room at halftime was a one-on-one -on -one conversation between offensive coordinator Doug Martin and David Garrard. He said to him, if you see any player on the sideline looking at the scoreboard, I want you to wring his neck. Now is the time when you put a team away. I'll finish it after the play, Dave. Gerard option. Keep it. Running through arm tackles. Close to a first down of the 28. Doug Martin said to him, now is the time when you put a team away and in the fourth quarter, that's our quarter. I want to see that scoreboard light up like a pinball machine. He got into David Gerard's face and said, you are responsible for that. This is your offense. Do you understand? And Gerard had one simple response. Yes, sir. Doug Martin, 50-year offensive coordinator under Steve Logan. Gerard, pick up another first down. And a give to Henry, and this will lose yardage. As Dorian Pitts knifes in, makes his second good stop on this drive. You know, that, that that's good stuff that, that Michelle just told us, because a lot of times you talk about the play on the field letting up on the field. There's not a lot of talk about what's going on the sideline. If you lost the motion on the sideline, and the great point there, and a great job by the coach saying, if guys are staring up at that scoreboard, smack them around a little bit. Say, hey, you know, we've got to concentrate on this on, on this game right here. That's a, that's a great job of the coach taking an area that you don't think about a lot. It's probably, I would think, complacency is considered. You don't really see it set in until it's, it's already there, and then the problem, how do you get rid of it? And they want to prevent it. At the outset, Rashawn Burns, third time. They run the tight end through the middle. Pretty good yardage every time. He's to the 20. Excellent blocking up front by Sherwin Lacewell, the center. Aaron Walker, the left guard. 
just nice work to spring that big fullback with the tight end number, and they're doing it again and again. Watch the center and the left guard. It's a simple trap play. The center blocks back to his left with Walker pulling to his right to kick out an explosion through the hole by Burns. Big third and two here. And they will be close. Not sure if they're going to get this one. Yeah, I think they're a little short here. Good stop there by Texas Tech. But, boy, Bill, you're right. I mean, they, on the plays where they're going up the middle with Burns, they are just gutting them right up the gut. They're taking the aggressiveness of the defense and turning it to the offense's advantage. McMackin knows it. He's got to change things up a bit. And what Doug Martin is doing right now, he's coming out and saying, we're going to knock it right down your throat. We're going to go down, and we're going to get something on the board. And on fourth and one, they're going to send the Kevin Miller field goal unit on. Doug played and learned how to coach under one of the greatest of all time, Jerry Clayton. 36-yard effort here. Miller with range up to 43. Good snap and hold. And kick. So the Pirates get something out of that drive after they surrendered 14 straight to the Red Raiders. It's 37-14. 37-14, Eastern Carolina leading, East Carolina leading the Red Raiders of Texas Tech at the inaugural Gallery Furniture Houston Bowl. And I'm with Jerry Apolity, the president and CEO of Bowl Series, Inc., who put this bowl game together. It's been 13 years since Houston had postseason college football. Why was it important to bring it back here? Well, I think the, when you have an event of this magnitude, I think you have to look at the timing of it. I felt that this city was very hungry for football. The new NFL stadium coming in with the new NFL franchise. Uh, haven't had a bowl game here in 13 years, as you indicated. Uh, also, the opportunity to play in that new stadium in two years. I think they had all the ingredients to have a very successful bowl game as we're having right now, Michelle. So what you're hinting to is that this bowl game may move out of this building and into the new one in order to grow it? Correct. Uh, we signed a five-year contract. Uh, with the stadium uh, we're going to play here two years and then we're going into the new stadium for a three-year contract so it's a total of five years so we're looking forward to it congratulations i know you're going to breathe a deep sigh after this is all over let's send it back upstairs to dave all right and that is quite a building going up next door oh, yeah. Lyant stadium which will be the first retractable roof football only facility the houston texas began play there in 2002. miller angles that one just out of the one he almost got it beyond the pylon. Would have been great if it was a punt. <laughs> so Texas Tech will get to take over at the 35 with this kick out of bounds. The way things have gone for the Raiders. Punt, pick. They can get a fourth down. Two more punts. Missed the field goal. And then after a punt, they finally put together a touchdown drive at the end of the first half and the beginning of the second half on a 65-yard catch and run by Daryl Jones, which accounted for 45% of what had been their total offense prior to that play, which was 142 yards. Right now, that's about a third of their total offense, and they need more of where that came from. In the very start short, Cole Roberts, the tight end, the gain of five. And Mike, you got the binoculars out. Excellent pass protection. Give him time. He goes to his outlet man, and they come up second short. That's how the offense is supposed to work. Well, it is. It's like an elongated running game. That is their running game. It's a short pass like that. And they're in a situation that they haven't been in a lot. It's second and five, second and four, even a couple of series ago, third and two. They haven't been in those situations. And the draw. Ricky Williams with a burst across the 50. I'll tell you what, Dave. He looks an awful lot like the old Ricky Williams to me. I'm talking about the Texas Tech Ricky Williams. People were starting to see it toward the end of the year. The most important thing on a draw play for the back is explosiveness. Be at full speed within two steps, and Ricky can do it. That knee has come back. What a wonderful player he is. Looks like it's a good decision on his part to come back for that extra year. Kerry gets it off to him. And can't quite break the tackle of Jerome Stewart. Well, a big reason it is smart to come back, and I agree with it, it's a smart, because remember a couple of years ago, 306 carries, fourth in the nation in rushing. 
This year he had 52 receptions. What is it in the NFL now? Marshall Falk, Edger, and James. Those types of backs, it's running and receiving. So him to come back for another year, I think it's a good move, trying to get that leg a little stronger, get the running game a little more, even though it's not used a lot here, and get the receiving in with it. He's very much better protected this half. And stumbling is Jones after he makes the catch at the Pirate 40, where it'll be third and one. Just so that the viewers can understand what's happening here, every time Tim Rose comes after him, meaning blitzing with more than four rushers, he gets burned. Either the receiver is wide open, and early Kingsbury was missing. Now he's connecting, and that's keeping drives alive. And they've been thrown it on third and short. This time, quarterback draw. Grid perfectly. No game. Nice John job. John Williams to the outside linebacker. Real nice job by John Williamson. Not only is the no nose guard, Amadou, spying, but various members of the defense are also spying. In this case, Williams just comes around the outside, makes the play, along with Chris Howell, number 90, who's the backup nose guard, plays behind Amadou. They were expecting a quarterback draw. How about just running one right up the middle? I know you're passing to, but it's one yard. Nope, short pass. Should have been picked off, and it would have been off to the races for Brandon Rayner. Really a poor series of play calls, those last two. And then the execution, clearly on the last play, should have been six points for East Carolina. The drop ball, just a lucky break for Tech. And I agree once again with Mike Gullet. Yeah. We've set a record for agreement we, tonight. We have. If you got Ricky Williams back there, you get the guys with their butts up in the air, a three-point stance, and you knock them back, and you make a yard. Well, well, we just saw him get a couple of good rushing attempts, so whoever will be back there, give that old line a chance, come off the ball a little bit, just for a yard. The tractors of the system point to just that. East Carolina, no problem getting the yardage on the ground out of Leonard Henry. All the way to the Tech 32 yard line. He is putting together a terrific night. 27 yards on his 13th carry of the night. He's up to 90 for the game. I tell you, the moose is loose. I mean, Henry is running like an angry bull. He's loose in the secondary, and people do not want to tackle him. Hey, there's no other way to say it. I mean, this Texas Tech defense is flat out getting embarrassed. They are getting embarrassed. The offense didn't help him on that last No. He cracks the yard. Uh, he had a good 23. Short toss, Stokes. Looks for a block from Harris. Written out of bounds at the 26 by Kevin Curtis. And you know, the names that we have to call much, if at all tonight, are their leading tacklers, Blugents and Curtis. Hardly at all have they been involved. You really have to wonder. John Norman made one big play, right? Flugents is another. Curtis was another leader. Dorian Pitts is another leader. He led the team in big plays, tackles for losses, and they've just been blocked. And we saw Briggs turn down Henry coming into the end zone when he could have met him at the two yard line. Solid stick there. Chris Kosurik, the senior leader, defensive line, co-captain. And another name we yeah. haven't called very much. So uh, the guys have just been handled tonight, and you got to give credit to the offensive line of the guys in the white shirts. Phoenix Evans, Aaron Walker, Lacewell, Samayan Jones, Chris Nelson. Yeah, yeah they got a center that's going to play at the next level. And sure Lacewell. Henry hit at the 29, where it's third and eight. A little slant in for Stokes. First down with a marker down. Stokes reaches the 15, but the flag was thrown by the referee, Bill Lamagne. Gained a 14 of the stand. A little frustration setting in. East Carolina responding, which they should not do, and they're going to end up getting flagged here. They may flag both of them, but East Carolina was the last to respond there. Invariably, when you respond, you're going to get called, even if the first guy doesn't. Yep. Roughing the quarterback. Oh. 
Offsetting personal fouls. Arnie Powell is the guy who got in the lick for the Pirates. Yep, he just got licked, too, by the professorial Coach Logan, who says, Son, I would really prefer that you not do that, or words to that effect. <laughs> and I'll make it hard for you to do so because you'll be standing right here next to me. Steve told us the other day when we played in the mud down in southern Mississippi, there was mud of biblical proportions. It really I, was. I know, but I mean, I just never heard a coach talk like that. That's a yeah. lot of mud. Well, like you said, he was going to be a professor, right? Yeah, was that Old Testament or New Testament mud? Th then he got hit in the head too much and decided a lot to be a of mud. Coach. But, but a, they won. A personal foul, roughing the passer on the defense. That's half the distance to the goal. Results in an automatic first down. We have a dead ball, late hit on the offense. That's a 15-yard penalty. It'll be first and 10, first and 10, after the penalty's walked off. All right, where football <laughs> gets complicated is inside the 30-yard line where you got half the distance, or inside the 15-yard line, I should say. They won uh, that slot fest in Southern Miss. Also, the only team to win in Conference USA at Louisville. And what kept them from another trip to the Liberty Bowl and another conference championship, 16-13 defeat to UAB. They were four points from the title, tied for second, five and two in the league, but staying a pretty strong case. They felt they were the best team in the league based on those two wins over the Cardinals and Golden Eagles. Very convincing performance tonight. Henry takes the top. 40-14, 352 to go in the third quarter. On the other side, Texas Tech sold its entire allotment of 9,000, and uh, over half of their fans were told stranded back in Lubbock, snowed in, 15 inches closing the airport. They didn't even get to make the trip. Wes Walker settles for the touchback. And after a timeout, the Raiders start from the 20 down 40 to 14. ESPN 2's exclusive presentation of the 2000 Gallery Furniture Houston Bowl is brought to you by Texas Instruments, the world leader in DSP and analog. East Carolina lighting up Texas Tech, and Steve Logan, after that successful field goal, lit up a couple of his blockers. Yes, he did. Number 66, Corey Schmidt, let his man inside as the right guard on punt protection, and that is an absolute no-no. They were lucky that it wasn't blocked. From the uh, tenor of the conversation, you would have thought his team was down 26. Pass is too tall and uh, incomplete intended for Carlos Francis. Let's go down to Michelle. All right, Dave. Well, it used to be that the Houston Oilers played in Houston, but in 2002, it's going to be the Houston Texans, and I'm with their general manager, Charlie Casserly. Had some great years with the Washington Redskins, and you already have set up a personnel staff, I understand, looking at players out there scouting already. Right. We got hired last uh, January, and immediately we hired a set of scouts, and uh, by, uh, by May, we had a complete scouting staff. Uh, we've been out scouting the NFL like everybody else, so try to give us some preparation for when we start getting players a year from now. Now, there's no way that you can be overlooking a guy, a junior, David Garrard, very good quarterback, sort of in the mold of a Dante Culpepper. That's what everyone's comparing him to. What do you see when you look at this player, and are you allowed to talk about him? Well, well I hope he doesn't get to 265. He's 235 right now. Well, we're not allowed to talk about him, but we, we don't draft for two years, so the one thing I can say is that uh, he ought to stay in school, be there every week pick, and uh, he's done a nice job tonight. He really has. He talks about staying in school. Now, I know that you uh, did a lot of ESPN radio with uh, Mike Golick. You told me a minute ago that Mike Golick actually asks good questions, and I want to make sure, were you really talking about our Mike Golick? I, I know that's hard for you to believe, and I know it's hard for everybody at ESPN to believe, but I'll tell you what, this guy is the next Mike Wallace of sports. <laughs> I've got nothing more I can add to that. Let's just send it back up to Mike <laughs> Wallace and the boys. That's <laughs> terrifying. I told you I speak good, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Kingsbury's throws through the hands of Daryl Jones and incomplete. The Mike Wallace of ESPN Radio. Wow. I've already got you pegged as the Charlie Weaver of uh, the two minute drill. <laughs> well, there you go. I appreciate That's all that. That's a lot of hats for you to wear. You know what? Charlie Castlery is going to do a great job, I think, 
with the uh, with the Texans. He is uh, he did such a great job with Washington. Left the skins, left them in good position to pick. Now they did things didn't turn out well that there this year for the Washington Redskins. But I think he's going to do a fantastic job in starting the new team right here. I think he's very disappointed not to be there. Right oh, now. he is uh, no. And <laughs> it down right out of his hand for Kingsbury. And uh, for Texas Tech, they had two really productive series. They had the big play touchdown by Daryl Jones shut down again. Now. They had some momentum, and they really had a feel for the game, and they got in that third and one situation. They blew it on third and fourth down with poor calls, I think, and it, it really, the momentum really went back the other way. And now they're giving the ball up again, and uh, it just... It was going well for them a bit. I agree with you. A couple, a couple of bad calls, I thought, bad execution. They had a little momentum. They couldn't hang on to that momentum, and it's really, really, it's been slipping away for a while, but now they're really on a banana peel. And those, the comments of the next Mike Wallace of sports. There's never been a Mike Wallace. I love Charlie Castle. He's a great guy he is. With great house again, kicks it away from Stokes. Return 170 yards for a touchdown untouched in the first half. And our Morgan Stanley, Dean Witter, well-connected storyline in the first half, all ECU on the scoreboard and on total yardage. Gerard, 13 to 22 for 193. A touchdown, he has been intercepted twice. He's also carried it seven times for 40 yards and a five-yard touchdown. Well, you know, and you look at these two quarterbacks who that we've talked about, and you look, we've been talking to Charlie Castle, we're bringing up the NFL, you look at the type of quarterback in the NFL now, and it certainly is more in the mold of a garage than it is of a King at this point. Go, go, go. Marcellus Harris <laughs> to the 34, the senior out of Newport News, Virginia. And, and I don't mean that out of their play tonight. I just mean out of the mold. Take away the option because you don't see obviously a lot of option in the NFL, but now the big quarterback, the quarterback that can run with the ball and become that extra threat. He can become that running back who happens to be able to throw the ball. It's almost an absolute necessity at this point, isn't it? When, when you look at a Troy Aikman who can't protect himself by screen. But it, it depends because every now and then you get that special one. of a Brian Greasy doesn't move around a whole lot. Peyton Manning, who I think is the best quarterback in the league, he's a pocket passer that can, if they can slide a little bit, but they have a smart head on their shoulders and have a great release and know where they're going with the ball. That can make up for their non-ability to run. Lawrence stumbles, still gets it off to Harris. It's a move all the way to the 48. And the yardsticks will continue to move for the Pirates who pick up a 15 for Harris. But guess what, Michael? This guy's got a smart head on his shoulders. Yes, he does. And those legs and that arm and the touch. And he's been extremely well coached by Doug Martin and Steve Logan. You could say the same of Dante Culpepper, who's now lighting up the NFL. And I love Brian Greasy and, uh, and uh, Peyton, Manning. Peyton Manning as well. I mean, which proves that you can have both types of guys yep. and win. Yep. Great fake, deep drop. Steps away from Hunt. Twice. Wow. Oh. Still buying time, and after all that, he throws it away. But about 99% of quarterbacks would have been sacked the first time by Hunt. Going back to the smart head on the shoulder. Yep. This guy does a Francis Hart Tarkington imitation, and then he does the right thing with the football. And you got to give Hunt credit, too. He is relentless. What I've got to do to get this guy on the ground? Let's get rid of this football. It's drawing a crowd. But he isn't even looking at the defenders, Bill. I mean, he continues to look downfield, look to make that play, because he knows he has the ability and the strength to shrug these guys. It's amazing. Logan says really a bigger version of his two predecessors, Jeff Blake and Marcus Crandall. Chris Sean Gilliam, who carried one time during the regular season, and almost turned that into a big one. Again, down below to Michelle DeCoy. You guys were talking about uh, David Garrard. There's so much to say about him. Doug Martin said he's embraced the role of being the leader of this offense. He said you love to coach him. David trusts the coaches. He's totally given himself to this coaching staff. He studies. There's no ego. He wants to be coached and corrected. He wants to be good. And how unusual is that? Unfortunately, it, it probably is pretty unusual this day. Yeah. Desiring correction. Well, that was the best aspect of Dante Culpepper. The best. Finally, they get him, and he stays gotten. Dorian Pitts untouched on a blitz. A 
blown pickup or a blown assignment by the quarterback, depending on the protection call. We don't know what that was. But if that, that was the first mental error I've seen Gerard make, if he's to account for the outside guy on that side, he either had a hot read or a protection call that he was supposed to make. So coming from the outside is Dorian Pitts unblocked. Either the quarterback failed to make a call or he failed to make a hot read. One of the two. Miller. Focused on what may close the third quarter. Patrick coming up to take it at the 22. Watch out. Welker can do a lot of what Stokes can do, and that is strike fear into the heart of a coverage team. Kelly Hardy brings him down after a return of 34 yards on a putt of 33 yards by Miller. Into the third, 40 to 14, ECU. The pounding continued during the third quarter for East Carolina. They start the fourth up 40 to 14. Dave Barnett, Bill Curry, Mike Wallace, <laughs> Golick, sorry, and Michelle Tafoya. The Astrodome in Houston, the first gallery furniture Houston Bowl. Cliff Kingsbury, all alone spots Daryl Jones up the left side and out of bounds inside the 20. Jones had a 65-yard catch and run for the second Texas Tech touchdown, their biggest play of the night. They have been outgained 429 to 234. Another night, as we look at our accurate stats, where time of possession is the least instructive stat on the board. It's amazing to see 52 yards rushing by Texas Tech. They only averaged 66, so they're almost right on pace for that. It's obviously those passing yards that are killing them. He's very time to look into the end zone. And will this draw a flag? No. It won't. And King Scoble can't believe it. Reggie Hemphill had him tied up. <laughs> it looked like that should have been called. I think they missed one over there. Reggie Hemphill just spun him around, and the ball was most definitely in the air. Just when you need, oh, yeah, oh yeah, that's oh, pass yeah. interference. Yeah. You cannot run into the man when the ball's on its way, and it was definitely a catchable ball. Officials don't miss many like that. Ricky Williams goes out wide. Goal goes over the middle and inside the five, all the way to the end zone for the touchdown goes Cole Roberts, 17 yards. And once again, down in scoring territory, Coach Tim Rose decides to blitz <laughs> young Cliff Kingsbury, who's perfectly coached and aware of the blitz, times his throw just right. Roberts makes a nice catch and then drags the defender into the end zone, and Tim is wishing he had not gone after him. They have yet to screw up on a blitz. Yeah. Colts adds the extra point. Tech at least making a respectable show of itself in the second half. Cole Roberts' father, Donald, played on the most successful Texas Tech team ever, their 10-win season in 1976. Well, I tell you, when this offense is in sync, it sure does look nice. I mean, they, they really do a nice job of moving the ball around. And, Bill, as you said, they went after him. So it's man-to-man -man on the tight end with the linebacker. Coverage was, was there. The ball was just thrown perfectly. Just let him see the backer in coverage. And, you know, he throws whipple balls. Yeah. That ball was not spiraling. No, just, no. But it was just in the right place. It was easy to catch. And it doesn't matter if it's pretty. Bobby Lane, who hung out down here in Texas yeah, early yeah. in his life, he didn't throw very pretty balls, but he went to NFL championships because he threw them to the right place. I'll tell you what, you can throw them end over end as long as they get there. See, this kid could have quit. Kingsbury could have hung it up and just said, well, I don't have it tonight. But he's come back, and he's led his team, and that's a great encouragement. It's going to be interesting to see if East Carolina can now come back and answer again, as they did last time with the field goal. In fact, they answered with two field goals. Kingsbury now has some impressive numbers to show for his night. 226 yards, 21 of 34, third touchdown pass. He led the nation in completions, 362 in their 12-game regular season. Can you imagine completing 362 passes in one season? 
They'll probably get another 20 throws in tonight, Snow. Stokes, a yard deep, bringing it out. Oh, man. For a minute, you said, oh, look oh, out, here he oh, goes man. again. What a football player. He hits that wedge like he's shot out of a cannon. You know, I he just, is absolutely yeah. fearless. I just sit up here and hold my breath. I'm actually holding my breath when he runs. You're just waiting for him to come, come out the other end and take it to the house. Yeah, and so many times he does. He's another guy who's going over to the hula bowl and trying to have some fun over there and impress some pro scouts some more. He'll impress some pro scouts boy, because boy. everybody needs somebody that will do this yep. and come in on third down and make first down. Garage 15-25 for 215 yards for the touchdown. Option keepers have been effective for him all night. He scored on a five-yard run about like that one. Let's go down below to Michelle. Well, Dave, I don't know if you knew this, but at Texas Tech, there's an old tradition of throwing tortillas onto the field when good things happen, like a touchdown is scored. Now, these have been banned from Texas Tech games, their home games, because the tortillas were thrown in such quantity that it would cover the field and cause interference. But a lot of the fans here today have brought tortillas. They're being thrown around the, uh, the Astrodome, and they're being cleaned up very promptly as well. Can Michelle, can you save a couple of those? Bring them up to go. I, save I'd be throw, happy throw to. Throw them at Mike. Thank you. They'll love it. I look at that tradition as a tremendous waste of Absolutely. good Mexican food. Absolutely. Imagine the fajitas you can make out of those things. Are you kidding me? That's just wrong. Mike, is it true when we asked you, our, our radio people at your show asked you about Christmas Day and how it went with your family, that your response was, it was wonderful because we ate a lot of ribs? Is that what you said? Oh, you know, it's a, a full family is a happy family. I mean, <laughs> is there some kind of rule? Is there a 15-minute rule? Pick those things up. We can still use them. Come on. Just brush them off. It's awful. <laughs> it's carpet. It's on. There's no dirt. Hey, Mike, I have a question for you. Yes. They've got corn and they've got flour. What do you prefer? I'll go with the flour, quite honestly. Flour tortillas. I'll yeah. gather as many as I can for you. I appreciate that. And a little sauce, a little extra sauce for Michael. No problem. But if you have to settle for corn, no problem. No, I'll take those two. You kidding me? Second or something better than nothing. Henry for a gain of one. Second and nine. Pirates are up with ground a few minutes off that clock. So again on the ground. And a loss. A uh, quick reaction by Lawrence Flugents, whose name we've not had a chance to call too often. Yeah, I want to go back to something Michelle said uh, that about Gerard and trusting the coaches, how he trusts the coaches in their calls. A big difference here in the offense, we talked about Kingsbury and the Texas Tech offense. He's changing plays at the line of scrimmage, calling out what he sees. Gerard rarely audibles. He usually calls what the coaches call. If the audibles, it's usually do a three-step drop and a quick throw. He usually sticks with what the coach says. That's the trust there. And rarely does he come out of it. So there is a, there seems to be a great rapport with he and the coaches. Three wides. And scrambling on play action and drop. Set at the 37. Mark Washington comes on a safety blitz. And on the running play on second down, a nice job of the strong safety. Curtis coming off the corner. Now Mark West Washington, the free safety, coming on the safety blitz. Both very well timed and effective to stop this drive. And we said Texas Tech would make a run, and that's exactly what they're doing. Second sack by the Raider defense tonight. <laughs> Snap and it hangs one high. And as he took that punt, he hit a knee, and John Norman has to settle for the 35 yard net punt. Not too often we see a linebacker returning punts. That's how versatile John Norman is. First annual gallery furniture Houston Bowl in the Astrodome this year and next before they move next door to still under construction Reliance Stadium in and out of the hands of King Scoville as Anthony Adams laid into it. Boy that was a nice read by Anthony Adams one of the twins Anthony and Antoine I we talked to him last night one of them said I'm seven years seven minutes older than the other 
I don't remember which one said it. Antoine is seven minutes old. Oh, he is? Than Anthony. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Well, sophomores out of Greenville. James Berry to Derek Doris. We got the first Red Raider touchdown. It was the 34 by Greg Saturday Night Lefevre. <laughs> <laughs> Plays without an undershirt, how can you do that? How can you have shoulder pads just on top of skin? Old school, old school football. He's yep. also got knee pads about the size of quarters. He tapes his he ankles. cuts up his knee pads. He does not tape his ankles. Ta well, he tapes his ankles right to his ankle. He doesn't, no, nah, he doesn't tape them at all. Oh, he doesn't tape nah, them at all? He doesn't believe in that tape stuff. That's That's Nothing there for Francis. Uh, he's immediately really, by our man he's, Saturday night. Yeah, he's making his presence felt now, and his team, just watch his teammates, the way they respond. And this defense needs a lift to get this Texas Tech team to suddenly become hot, slowed up. Nice quick read, feels the blockers, goes beyond them. Sure tackle. Junior out of Garden City Community College in Kansas, Ocean City, New Jersey. He's got a brother that's a quarterback. He says he doesn't tape his ankles either. He plays up to the, to the northeast. Does Mike Wallace tape his ankles? That's the question to me. <laughs> Man. I didn't think they let you go on the field without your ankles taped anymore to coach you. Oh. Sends one to Stokes. Can you cover it any better than Paul McClendon did? Didn't violate the two-yard halo and knocked him straight backwards. Heroics this time for Stokes. 9.47 to go. Defense having done its job back to the Pirate offense with 9.47 to go in the dome. And a 40 to 21 lead. Gerard, 16 to 26, 221 yards. On the ground, Rashawn Burns, double duty, tight end slash fullback. He powers out about eight yards, tackled by Kevin Curtis. Well, the Texas Longhorns were the last team to win a bowl game in Houston. The last Blue Bonnet Bowl, 1987, big play. A Tony Jones 77-yard touchdown catch to start the scoring. And then a run from the multi-talented Eric Metcalf to give Texas and David McWilliams a bowl win in his first season as the Longhorns head coach. 32-27 over Ironhead Hayward's Pittsburgh team. That was the final Blue Bonnet Bowl. And 13 years later, postseason football returns to the Astrodome. And with the new stadium, it was a couple of years, some bowl tie-ins between certain conferences and certain games up for grab. They, they hope that they can move onward and upward. Dorian Pitts has had a big play night for Texas Tech, and he has the fumble recovered. Art Brown never had control. It was Pitts who wrestled away a fumble number the first half. Boy, I tell you what, they're just, they're, they just have the slightest bit of breath left. Does Texas Tech, they're just hanging out. If they can do something with it. You see him, Pitts just, well, it just dropped the ball. That was a gift for Pitts. He was just coming up on the backside trying to catch it from behind. Ball fell right into his lap. Art Brown just dropped the ball. Yeah, if he catches it on the dead run, he runs it in the right. end zone, and this thing gets real interesting. But what's happened is East Carolina has gotten sloppy, and it just lost its edge, and that guy right there knows it very well, and he's a little sick of his stomach. That defenders work at returning turnovers, too. They look for touchdowns. Short yardage on first down, Derek Doris. Uh, Texas Tech team played in the Blue Bonnet Bowl in 76, 11 years before that. Album. And the, the, the Texas game we just saw, they lost to Nebraska 27 24. I played in this Astrodome from 85 to 87, started my career here. And Bill, I know you played here in like the 20s. Was it? Well, it was built in 65. Oh. I know you both have fond memories of the yeah. original. I'm not going to honor that question with a response. Bill, Bill played on the dirt spot that was going to be this. Kingsbury running for his life, and down he goes again. First guy to get there, Joe Warren Blair, and Greg Lefevre finished him off. Greg Lefevre has decided to step up and jack this team up. He, he's really made an impact on the attitude of the defense. 
The offense is not playing particularly well right now. The momentum could quickly swing to the guys in the black shirts, and he's almost single-handedly preventing that. Third and 15. Four targets to pick from. He goes deep up the right side, and it is caught by Baker. Wow. Ken Baker had only one catch early in the game for four yards before he holds this one in for 30 against Grover Benton. It looked like to me he got a little nicked when he made that catch in the first quarter. Right. Yep. And maybe it took a little time to recover and come off a little ankle sprain or a turn. But look at the concentration. This is how you lead the Big 12 in receiving. <laughs> a six sideline in East Carolina for letting this blowout turn into something other than a blowout. If they score here and get the ball back again, we've got a real football game. First and goal from the four. Ricky Williams. Well, the duck back inside. He may pick up a yard. <laughs> Either somebody's head or their helmet went rolling. Oh, it was a helmet. Okay. No head in it. Thank <laughs> God. Here again, one of the weaknesses of this offensive thinking is when you get in the red zone, you really need to get in a three-point stance right. and knock people back. You just don't do it enough. It's a simple matter of reps. You're not accustomed to a short yardage offense. You know, the difference there at the end of that, we, we saw East Carolina do this, and we, you talked about their old linemen taking it in the end zone. On that last play, you saw three Texas Tech offensive linemen basically have to line a scrimmage on their knees, not leading it through. So there is a huge difference. You're absolutely right, Joe. Well, they're in a two-point stance. Tough to run block. Fade pass. Doris comes back and brings it in. He has his second touchdown. And this game may not be over. And that's Mike Leach's answer to us talking about red zone running the football. The theory is we're not going to be very good at that, but we're going to be awfully good at all the other things. Little timing, little fades, and coming back to the intentional underthrow. John Unitas was the master of that. Young Kingsbury has already learned how to do it. Throw it up high, too. Six foot two is Doris. Baker, who caught the early one, six foot five, so they have the big receivers. Now they decide to go for two here and try and get within 11, which would be a field goal, a touchdown, and a two point conversion away. Good decision. And another fade, and will that draw a flag? Nope. Jones, run down by Kelly Hardy. They say incidental contact. Kingsbury has. Connected with Derek Doris twice for touchdown passes to bring Tech back into it. 40 to 27. A long way to go. ESPN 2's exclusive presentation of the 2000 Gallery Furniture Houston Bowl is presented by GalleryFurniture.com, the finest, fastest, most affordable store in the world. And in part by Capital One. What's in your wallet? Well, the portion of Texas Tech fans who made it in before the 15 inches of snow finally have something to celebrate. They're back in this game. It's 40 to 27, 644 still to play. They have all three of their timeouts. And we'll see if they have an onside kick in store. Well, they dribble it and make Stokes pick it up off two hops. Now, can they find him? Oh. <laughs> Fifth guy got him. Marcus Boyd. The reason that Texas Tech has made it a game, their first seven drives all scoreless. Their last seven, they've come up with all 27 of their points. And it began, it began with that last drive in the, in, the, in the first half. Right. They finally got points, got a rhythm, and they pretty much stayed in it in the second half. And I would give East Carolina the most credit for that zero you saw in the first seven drives because of the way they play defense against offense. Carolina trying to use time on the ground. It's Henry down below to Michelle Tafoya. Well, a little bit of frustration building up now on the East Carolina bench, which was not evident at all early in this game, but on the de defensive side of things, being unable to slow down Texas Tech on their last drive. Sophomore defensive tackle Jawarn Blair, number 44, came off the field, got in a scuffle with a couple of other players. One coach really chewed him out, and another tried to calm him down. And finally, senior defensive tackle Devon Claybrooks calmed him down. But 
it was looking like it might turn into something quite large, guys. You know, they are still ahead. <laughs> Time to get that out of control. Gerard. On the option to the 32. Very frustrating for the linebackers for Texas Tech because this is a companion series of plays. The trap to the big fullback and then the trap option faking to the fullback and suddenly Garrard's on the corner with the option. So Flugents has to step up and honor the fullback. If he doesn't, they're going to gash him right up the middle. Well, he steps up, honors the fullback, and he gets blocked, and there goes Garrard on the option. Very good series, popularized by Syracuse for about the last decade. Texas Tech will use its first time out, and they'll talk about how to stop a third and three coming for Gerard and the Pirates. It is freezing in much of Texas. It definitely is in Lubbock. But things are warming up inside the Astrodome for the Red Raiders. They're closed within 13. They need to stop a third and three here. Swing pass. Terrence Copper spins for a first down across the 40. What a nice call and yeah. well blocked out there. Excellent blocking by the two wide receivers who accompanied Copper. Their job was to get in front of their people. It was a cross-blocking scheme. Oh, yeah. Nice job, especially by Dodd and Marcellus Harris, number four, number 82. Yeah, you saw the blitz come from that way, and Flugents, the middle linebacker's responsibility to get out there, but it was such a quick pass. Just seems like East Carolina's winning the chess match of play calling as well as the uh, execution. Now back to Henry for a couple. Leonard Henry who has two touchdowns of a yard each brought down by John Norman Lock rolling down to 440 two timeouts remaining for the Red Raiders. This is what happens when you go conservative and certainly you haven't seen a deep pass in several series from East Carolina. And so what happens is the secondary is creeping up. They're not as aware. You might see a little play action and throwing the ball down the field from Steve Logan. in the eye again. Sean Blitz. Gerard. For two more. And the clock will roll under four minutes. Devin Lemons on the tackle for Tech. Well, this is the best we've seen Tech handle the option. They actually have more people than the people optioning them. Number one, and then on East Carolina side, they are staying in bounds. No pitch to the pitch man there to possibly go out of bounds. So the clock continues to run and very soon Texas Tech's going to have to start using its timeouts if they want to get back in this game in a very real way they've got they've got to have two scores two touchdowns to do it they just converted to third and three this will be a little tougher they need seven Stokes with a block will get it with ease and a lot more to the 34 when they have to get it, they've got enough playmakers that they're getting every key pickup. And that, yeah, and that to me, Bill, is the killer instinct. You don't just run a play, maybe have to punt and keep the clock going. You throw the pass, even though it's more of a safe pass, but you take that chance to get the first down. And the story here again is good blocking by Rashawn Burns, 89, and Arnie Powell, number five, and a very wise Stokes staying in bounds. Beautiful. Just like a running play. Watch him cut back inside, keep that clock moving after it stopped temporarily for the first down. Boy, Burns has done it all tonight. Running, catching, yep. blocking downfield. Is that a heck of a game? I guess so. 266 all purpose yards. Leonard Henry will uh, lose two. So when you go back to the program that Bill Lewis left in the top 10 after 1991. They've continued what he established. And since 95, the programs in North Carolina, no one has won more than East Carolina. The least publicized, but the winningest in the state. Winningest by percentage, certainly. These guys are carrying a chip on their shoulder, aren't they, though, Bill? I mean, when people talk about Carolina football, they think North Carolina, North Carolina State, East Carolina doesn't jump to everybody's mind. And these, these kids carry a chip on their shoulder because of that. Yeah, and they use it well. Yes, they do. Burns drops 
gets it. He had nice yardage and was stripped, and Mark Washington comes away with another turnover for Texas Tech. He has an interception. Now he's got a fumble recovery. John Heisman, the legendary Georgia Tech coach, is supposed to have said, with a football before his squad, Ben, it is better that you should have died as a small boy than that you dropped this. <laughs> and uh, that's what something like that Steve Logan may say to Burns when he gets back to the bench. Of all the wonderful things he's done, this was the one thing he could not do to let these guys have a little hope again. Now they've got a glimmer. All year, they lost only five fumbles, fourth best in the country. They were plus four in turnovers for the season, so this has really come totally out of character for them. One flaw in their game, five turnovers. Oh, can't drop that one. Man, oh man, Daryl Jones has to hang on to that and turn it up for big yard. That's the second big drop for Jones. Of course, his play was the one that sparked his team in the first half. The long distance run and he made a nice catch on a poor throw then but you've got to look those in and make those count and Darrell knows it seems like everybody's looking to make the big play now where are they going after the catch forgetting the most important I thing think that's exactly what happened forgetting the most important thing of making the catch first two-man rush for the pirates so kingsbury's got all day and nobody to throw to Still rolling, still nobody. Now pulls up and a diving attempt by Baker, and he can't come up with it. <laughs> two man rush. That is something you don't see too often. Well, what you no. see, this even, <laughs> what we saw in the first half that is even less often seen was they were getting pressure with yeah. the two man yeah. rush. Third and ten, needing two scores, minute 48 to get it. But first things first, they've got to get ten yards in the next two snaps. Big Devon Claybrook saying, I've got to do this almost by myself. <laughs> now they're bringing four. Over the middle, Pablo and stuck. Good football Baker play. hit by Antoine Adams. Good football play. Good offense, good defense. Yep, and first down, so the, the clock stops while they move the chains, and Texas Tech will get right up on the ball and be ready to go. And here comes the Tim, Tim Rose wave effect, the charge of the light brigade. <laughs> he sends another unit out there to keep fresh troops going. 3 to 10, got 11. <laughs> Running out of bounds is King Scoble. Get the clock stopped at a minute 28. You talked about the people running in and out, Bill. Tim Rose will use up to 25 players on defense for East Carolina. And he'd like to keep the troops fresh, and they know the count. They go by a count system, especially the linebackers. Usually six plays in, six plays out. The players just naturally run on and off the field themselves. On the 48. Four man rush. Two tall. Incomplete. Intended for Carlos Francis. Yeah, but that was catchable too. And that's back to the what you were talking about earlier. Players substituting themselves. And we talked about the players trusting the coaches. Right. Now this is the coaches trusting the players. Substitute yourselves. You don't see that very often. No, you don't. I mean, and we talked about do you want to get into a rhythm? You want to try and and have players get into a rhythm. These players don't care. They don't mind the substituting. And it's working tonight. I mean, they are actually keeping this offense for the most part penned in for this late run. Third and two, Baker diving. Did he get out of bounds to stop the clock? Yes. The turf he monster did. got him. Fumbled it out of bounds to stop the clock at a minute 16. Yeah, and I think he meant to fumble it out of bounds to stop the I clock. So too. That's a pretty smart play. I think he's a very cagey player. The turf monster got him by the ankle, though, and got him on the ground. Very smart, though. That you gotta conserve every second you can. Smart as a tree full of owls. Huh? <laughs> Sometimes I just don't get you. <laughs> now we're gonna take the deep shot. It has to come sometime. Leaping catch at the 35. Eric Doris, 11 yards, another first down. Clock stop 104. Dave, we don't have a time for a replay, but the reason they can't take the deep shot is because of the line of white shirts. 
when the, after the ball is snapped, it's lined up about 15 yards deep, and it's going to be intercepted if they do. They're forcing them to take the inter underneath stuff. Kingsbury keeping for another first down and inside 20, 49 seconds. That helps at 16 yards. Two timeouts, 49 seconds. Don't want to have to use one here. Many coaches think the best play in football is the quarterback running straight up the middle when he's got an opening and making that first down. Now rolling with 40 at 39. Run the short toss. Ricky Williams heads out of bounds. Gets to the 15 at 30 seconds. Well, they're going to start taking the shot toward the end zone here soon. I know they're trying to conserve the timeouts and trying to stop the clock, but right now, even if they score on the next play yeah. and get an onside kick, they're still fighting the clock badly. They yeah. get one more possession. From the 15, Kingsbury scrambling, keeping, out of gets out of bounds for no gain, and that took eight seconds. Should have thrown that away. Yep. And saved several yep. precious seconds. But he's young, and uh, Coach Leach will teach him that if he doesn't eat that pin before this thing's over. We've all chewed a bunch of pins, Mike. <laughs> I don't blame you, buddy. He's kept his team in this thing. They're fighting back. They've really? made it respectable, and they and it's not over. Gotta really make sure the cap's on when you do that, don't you? Got that ink <laughs> in your mouth? Well, it messes up your shirt and your jaw. Yeah. 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 It was 34 to 7. Not many foresaw at this moment. Third and six. This one to the end zone, one on one. And intercepted by Kelly Hardy, his second of the night. And it wraps up the win for ECU. Well, they tried to go to Baker, six foot five, throw it up in the air, hope that he can out jump. Good positioning, though, by the defender. The ball a little underthrown. He was able to get it at its highest point. See, again, throwing it up, wanting to get the jump ball, but it's underneath. Good job of getting up in the air by Hardy, taking it at its highest point. Great job, boxed him out like a power forward. Yep, and Tim's out on the hash. He wanted to make the play himself. The ball has to be thrown over the outside shoulder of the receiver so that he's the only one that has a chance to catch it. East Carolina, after losing the inaugural Mobile Alabama Bowl to TCU last year, points toward a bowl victory all 2000. And Steve Logan has it in the first Gallery Furniture Houston Bowl. Going four seconds on the clock. Texas Tech has two timeouts. Surely not calling one here, or are they? They are. Yeah. And they're getting booed for it. Yeah. Not much point. But the dousing's already taken over for uh, for Logan, as opposed to worried about the clock and the score. Well, there may be some ridicule about this timeout, but you're trying to teach your team that you never quit. Sure. You never quit. You use every single timeout, you use every resource in an attempt to fight to the end, no matter how hopeless it is. And that's probably what the staff's teaching. And, and now it's in the books. East Carolina completes an 8-4 and four 2000 season. They're the first winners of the Gallery Furniture Houston Bowl. And Steve still hadn't smiled. Surely he'll smile here. That <laughs> just sinks in. He's still been jumping on people the whole fourth quarter. Mike Leach in Texas Tech in his first season as head coach. Seven and six in 2000. They made it a game. They were down 34 to seven at the half. They fought back and they caused some nervous moments for David Garrard and Steve Logan in the fourth quarter. But he did get the winners dousing with a 40 to 27 win. We'll be back in Houston in a moment. The seats available in that furniture bowl out there. The Pirates got off to a fast start. Keith Stokes takes the punt. 
goes untouched all the way into the end zone for a 71-yard punt return for a touchdown, and this would be a sign of things to come for the Pirates tonight. Then it's David Garrard. He heaves a bomb to Derek Collier. It goes 44 yards for a touchdown, and as of right now in the fourth quarter, it is 40 to 27 in favor of ECU. Two touchdowns, 17 to 27, 229 through the air. Daryl Jones for Texas Tech. Six catches, 147 yards, and a 65-yard touchdown. And let's send it down to Michelle to I Ford. can't hear Dave. All right, with Steve Logan, you know, that what happened early in this game was that you scored easily. They blocked the point after. You countered with the onside kick, which you recovered. Was that a scripted tone setter? Because it really did seem to take any momentum away from Tech early. The uh, onside kick was scripted early. To, we saw something on film we had a chance to take advantage of, and it came in, obviously, at a nice time. I mean, you guys lost in your bowl game last year. You didn't want to do that again, and, and immediately this team took control of the game. I'll tell you, they, they had a great focus the moment we got the bowl bid uh, about a month ago. They, they got together and said they're going to go win this game, and it, it's a credit to the kids. And I know that it's a win, and they played brilliantly, particularly in the first half, but I know there were some things you would have liked to have seen different in the fourth quarter, which is normally your quarter. Well, just the turnovers kept the game close, and we, we just got to hold on to the ball. But I'll tell you what, we've won 23 games in the last three years and about 52 games in the last six years. We're averaging almost eight wins a season. That's what I'm proudest of is the long-term almost, I don't want to say excellence, but it's a long-term run of really good football. Congratulations. I have about time to ask one question of David Garrard, just a tremendous performance at quarterback. At halftime, you were told to take control of this game. A little bit different in the second half than the first. What made the first half so great? Well, the guys just came out the gates. They came out prepared, mentally focused. Everybody just came out with a tremendous energy, and we just made things happen. Keith Stokes, all my receivers, the line, everybody just came out prepared. Are you going to stick around for one more year? I am. <laughs> Good to hear. Congratulations. Thank you. Hello, everybody back in Greenville. I just want to tell everybody hello. Let's send it back up to Dave Barnett. All right, memorable night for David Garrard and the Pirates, and they will take home the first Gallery Furniture Houston Bowl trophy. 40 to 27 win for Michelle Tafoya, Bill Curry, and Mike Golick. So long. This is Dave Barnett. Good night from Houston. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports.